Okay, here we are again. We will let the intro play out, because it plays out in about 15-20 uh, seconds here. And then once the intro is done, we'll load up our file and we'll get going. Hey, Lifeblood, how's it going? Long time no see. How you doing? We're just about to get started, just watching the intro real quick, and then we'll get moving. Oh, no problem, Lifeblood, no big deal. You can come and go on the stream as you please. Whatever you feel like doing, that is okay. All good with it. Alright, let's start this up and we will boot up our. Oh, that was already on the right volume. Okay. And we will boot up our file. And hey, Conquer, it's going good. How's it going for you there? As I was just telling Lifeblood, we are just about to get started. Uh, let me take a drink actually before we do the intro real quick. Glad to be back. I am glad you're here, Lifeblood. Because we play in a good game. And we'll have some fun with it. We'll shoot the breeze like we always do, and uh, generally we'll faff around and have a good time, I think. Okay, let's get started. So I have discovered a potential little, uh, a potential little thing that I could do to take this here Croconaw that we have on our team and maybe turn it into an Alakazam? Except not with psychic moves, with with Surf instead, because, well, I told you Surf was busted in this game. Now we just got to make sure that our special attack is high enough to actually take advantage of it. So we're going we're gonna to work on that in just a few minutes here. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Pokemon Coliseum, the stream edition. Last time, we began our adventure here in the Ore region. And ended up here in Pyrite, 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 however you want to pronounce it. I'll say Pyrite, even though I, I used to say Pyrite. And so now I say Pyrite. I didn't know how to pronounce it when I was younger. So if I interchange the two of them, that's why. Uh, apologies for the confusion. Anyway, um, we're here in Pyrite Town. And we found out from KL last time that he got a Shadow Pokemon at the Coliseum Challenge. So we're going to do a little more battle practicing, catch a few more Shadow Pokemon in Dueling Square. And then we'll go take the Coliseum Challenge. But before we do anything today, I want to check out something real quick right here. Uh, if we take a look at Makahita's heart gauge, you'll notice that it's all the way down. It says the door to its heart is about to open. Undo the final lock. We unfortunately don't know how to undo the final lock just yet, so uh, basically once you get a shadow Pokemon to about that point, uh, if you're not going to use it in your party, you'll probably want to store it away for now, uh, which is what I'm going to do with Makahita because I'm not going to use it in my party. So we'll just stick it right in the PC and we'll grab one of these other guys. Uh... Actually, we won't grab one of these other guys. We'll go grab uh, the other Pokemon that I'm going to snag uh, first things first today. So we'll go do that first before we do anything else. Doing all right dealing with the heat over here in Soka. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty hot over there from what I understand. 
it's like a, we got uh, the normal SoCal weather over here, which is, you know, 60s, 70-ish degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, and you guys are dealing with a heat wave over there, which is just not good. Not good at all. Uh, so I've rearranged my party just a little bit. I've also rearranged my items so that they're in, you know, the order I'm basically going to want them to be. Because, I mean, these are probably going to be up here for most of the game. Uh, at the very least, in some capacity. Nora, what are you looking at with so much intent in your eyes? Oh, man. Oh, boy. Anyway. Back out into Pyrite Town. So now... I mentioned I found a little way to make it so that Crokinaw can do some crazy shenanigans with Surf in this one. As it turns out, you can EV train here in the Tool Link Square. <laughs> oh, here we go with the EV training. I, I don't think I'm going to do this very seriously, but I am just going to do it fairly casually in such a way that we uh, might make a little bit of extra stats up because it has a minus special attack nature, our Crokinaw, so we'll have to make up the stats a little bit. And as it turns out, you remember this guy? We caught the Quagsire from him last time. If we battle him again after capturing his Shadow Quagsire, let's take a look at his new team, because he'll replace the Quagsire with a different Pokémon. And as it turns out, it's a Horsey. So both of these Pokémon give one special attack EV, which means every two battles that we do with this guy, we get an extra point of special attack on whomever participates in the battle. Uh, Espeon could obviously use it, and Croconaw could obviously use it because of his nature, so... I don't know, we might just do this battle a few times while we're catching the rest of the Shadow Pokemon around here. I think that should be a decent idea. Um, I want to get him into Hyper Mode for right now. Not particularly. I'll just bite. It's fine. Oh boy, a cop! <laughs> Hello, Marie. How are you doing? Welcome. Yeah, just casually stealing Pokemon. You know how we do. Just, you know, skirting the uh, very morally gray areas of the law. That's this game, in a nutshell. <laughs> there is. There's EV training in this. It's wild, yeah. I'm not going to do it, like I said, very seriously, but, uh, well, Cro like I said, Croconaw's nature is jolly, which reduces its special attack, and that's no good for our purposes, because I want to spam surf until the cows come home, so uh, we're going to get it a little extra special attack while we can. For now, it's not really all that effective, because, well, we only get two EVs per battle gives it a little bit of experience, too, so that's not too bad, but yeah, the EV draw for right now isn't that great. We will fix that in probably about two streams, so. <laughs> it's about 95 over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. We, uh, we had similar weather over here, like, last week, I think, so we just switched places, basically. So that's just great. Uh, as for refighting Divil here... Just walk into any building and then walk out. It doesn't matter if you go in the Grand Hotel. It doesn't matter if you go into the windmill area there. It doesn't matter if you go back to the thing to heal your Pokemon at the Coliseum. Just walk into and out of any building and his Pokemon will be ready to rumble again. Which will be uh, pretty decent for us. So, Alright, and I think what I want to do now is I want to have Umbreon out so that he can get a little bit of experience. Since uh, Espeon just got about 600 on him. So, we'll start with these two. Definitely want Croconaw out for this battle as well, though, because this battle right here is the next one for our next Shadow Pokemon. And also, the Shadow Pokemon will give us... Well, actually, we won't get EVs from the Shadow Pokemon because we're going to be catching it, so you don't get EVs when you catch something. Doesn't Surf technically flood the area, so that's another crime. Nice, yes. <laughs> we are increasing our crime level. I will have a high wanted level by the time we're done with this game from all of the flooding that I do here in the Ore region. How does that even work in the ore region, anyway? You can't find water hardly anywhere. I don't know. There's a conspiracy here aimed specifically at Croconaw. But maybe we'll figure it out eventually. I might want to switch Croconaw, though, because, as you can see, uh, Street Performer Diogo here has a Shadow Flappy. That's fun. Flappy, however you want to pronounce it. Flappy, I don't know. Pronounce it how you'd like, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but what I want to do is I specifically want to make contact with it. I know that sounds incredibly counterintuitive considering what its ability is, but I do actually want to make contact with it. The best way to do that is probably with Umbreon's Bite. Uh, now that Croconaw got the little bit of participation credit, we'll take him out, we'll put Espeon in, and we'll do this. So now, if this works like I think it should... Okay, well it flinched, so that's a good thing. 
Um, but yeah, I'm specifically trying to make contact with uh, Fluffy because I wanna, I wanna proc something. <laughs> I wanna proc an ability and then proc another ability in a chain. Resolve this shit like Yu-Gi-Oh cards going off one right after another. Even though I haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh in 12 years-ish. More than that, actually, it's been like 15. <laughs> The water comes from Pokemon Derp. Fair enough. I, I will I will accept that explanation. <laughs> it makes about as much sense as anything else, so... <laughs> Ow. Would you be doing sort of public service by bringing water to the region? That's true. Yeah, I mean, if it's an arid region, they could use some, you know, potable water. You know, change the ecosystem. Of course, tell that to Team Aqua. They tried to do that, and they ended up uh, summoning an ancient uh, water god the surface of the world. That didn't work out so well for them, that's for sure. Goodbye, Shroomish. I'll see you in the next game, bro! Sis, that's the female Shroomish. There you go. Yeah, it might be a little too much. They would have to, like, I don't know, do some sort of irrigation system or something. Like, uh, just walk into a town. Oh, god damn it! Sniper's in town again. Alright. You know, get the irrigation canal going. Okay, so it didn't exactly work how I was hoping it would, but this will work for my purposes anyway. So Fluffy has Thunder Wave, which will paralyze Espeon. But, because of Synchronize, it'll paralyze Fluffy right back. You can basically force that to happen also if you make contact with Fluffy because of its static ability. So Static has a 30% chance of activating on any move that makes contact. It'll paralyze that Pokemon, and because Umbreon has Synchronize, it'll paralyze Floppy right back, which will make it a little easier to catch. So, yeah, that that was my secret plan that I was trying to do. It didn't uh, it didn't pan out, but I'll <laughs> I'll take what we got. It's fine. <laughs> um, let's put up a Reflect for Shadow Rush in case this doesn't work. Oh, you're playing your first Souls like Little Witch Novita. It's so hard, but so fun and so cute. Well, that's a good that's a good combination. It's it's good to get a difficult game that also has other positive points like that. So, I'm sure you'll have fun with it. Most Souls like sir, uh, the ones that I know about anyway, are pretty good. So, we'll be playing a couple of them for the stream. So, and there we go. We grabbed her Shadow Floppy. Two more to go in this uh, square here, and then we can go challenge the thing. Yes, it was a good plan. It didn't pan out, but, you know. <laughs> Worked out anyway, I guess. Oh, and okay, what do you know, Diogo? Ah, yes, so Shadow Rush is question mark type in this game. It's kind of like the curse move, except curse is a status move, so you'd never get damage out of it. Unless you are using it as a ghost type, in which case you get indirect damage, because it applies curse to the opponent. But, uh, yeah, Shadow Rush is question mark type. It's not affected in any way by the type chart, so... It just is a base 90 power move with no particular strengths or weaknesses whatsoever. It's really good, and you should use it all the time. So... Yeah, there's that. Uh, let's see... Yeah, that's about... Actually, that's about right for a Fluffy. Speed is a little high, so it probably has a plus speed nature, but that's... All the rest of the stats look about right, so... Uh, let's see. I think we go heal. And then we fight Divil again. And then we catch another Shadow Pokemon. How about that? So the first half hour of this will probably just be us going back and forth. Um, do I want to go to the Grand Hotel? Not really. I'd rather save my money. We'll go to the Grand Hotel one of these other times, I guess. But I'd rather save my money for now, so I'll just... I'll take the long walk. And by long, I mean it takes about 30 seconds, so... I guess we can check if the uh, Colosseum challenge is done at this point, while we're here. Because we do want to go do that at some point here. The most amazing part is that people are okay with their Pokémon being stolen. Yeah, it's it's weird, right? Like, it seems strange to me, because it's like, okay, wait a minute, your, your Pokémon, I just took it. And now you're gonna, you know, you're gonna replace it with something else. Okay, fair enough. I guess it's, you know, it wasn't... It was given to you, in the case of Pyrite Town, it was probably given to you by, uh... Mirror B or one of his goons, but I just took your Pokemon, man, like... And then there's this one time in the next game, in Pokemon XD, where the guy is in disbelief about it. He's like, why, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you just snagged my Pokemon. And it's like, I, I did. I did snag your Pokemon. <laughs> what do you mean, if I didn't know any better? Uh, yes, are you guys open? Ah, okay. 
We're always a little too late to get into these challenges, aren't we? Oh well. That's fine. Uh, we have to basically go run around the, um, the town and talk to somebody specific in order to trip a flag in the game's code to make it so the challenge is complete and we can challenge again. Uh, but we'll go do that after we snag all the Shadow Pokemon in Duel Link Square, so... Yeah, no complaints, no comments, nothing said so weird, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just like, I'm, I'm glad you guys are okay with it. This must be a fairly common occurrence around here. Must be snag machines everywhere, but everybody run around taking everybody's Pokemon. Uh, Divil? Uh, actually, no, I don't want to battle you just yet. Hang on. I, I'm gonna battle you, let me just get the correct team out here. I forgot, I have to have Croconaw in front so he can get special attack Ephes. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get him into every battle where a Pokemon vaguely seems like it would give a special attack EV, so like most Psychic types and uh, some Water types. I don't know. Basically, if it looks like they vaguely give a special attack EV, I'm gonna try to switch Croconaw in for the participation credit because uh, we gotta get this man using Surf at the most power that he can possibly get, and this battle takes all of one minute to do, so it's like, yeah. This is an easy way to get him. Uh, incidentally, if you're training for more EVs, you could also use Street Performer Diogo's new team that she has now that we caught Shadow Fluffy. She replaces it with the Pichu, if I remember correctly. So that would get you one HP and one speed EV. So if you're training a special attacker, these two battles are a pretty good way of getting the EVs that you need. So, yeah. We'll have to find one that gives just physical attack later, and then we'll use that for any physical attackers we get. But for a little while, special attack is going to be the way to go in this one, at least with the way that I have my team structured. So, we'll we still use physical attacks, it's just mainly the only physical attack we'll be using is Shadow Rush, so. Yeah, I'm going to beat you up specifically to train, okay? That guy. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> He just loves battling enough to let me continuously womp him, so. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Welcome. We just training, we're fighting stuff in the dueling square, grabbing some shadow Pokemon while we're at it. Um, I don't know what this lady has. I'm going to switch Umbreon instead of Croconaw, just in case. I don't want to mess up Croconaw's EVs too badly. <laughs> no, that doesn't even matter all that much. Uh, let's see. Actually, I think you have flying types, and you have, uh, guide, what does it say she has? We have, uh, she has grass types, so definitely don't want, <laughs> don't want Croconaw out for now. Actually, I could stick Slugma out. Grass types, uh, he doesn't really care about those. She doesn't really care about those. So, yeah, we'll keep walking around with these guys and just, you know, go from there. Get them some participation credits for their uh, heart gauge where we can. Probably not going to be able to purify every Pokemon in this playthrough, but I'll I'll do my best to get as many as I can, you know. So, what's happening? Yeah, we got a Fluffy, and now we're catching some more Shadow Pokemon. So, Lord, this game is fun. Also, since you're a witch and a little witch no beta, you get MP back for perfect dodging. Oh, that's cool. It's actually really useful because there aren't a whole lot of ways to restore MP in most Souls likes. Usually it's a set number of uses and that's it. Hey Frank, how's it going? Welcome. Just uh, collectively getting through my chat. We've got a Shadow Skip Loom to catch and we're just trucking along pretty much. Uh, I'm going to anticipate two Hyper Modes this turn, but we did get Yawn, so maybe we'll only get one. Uh, yeah, why don't we put Skip Loom to sleep? That would probably work pretty good. That did not quite do that much to Oddish, but that's okay. Mistrevis doesn't have the highest physical attack, so can't expect too much out of it for now. Until we get something else like Psychic or something. <laughs> I say that like I'm actually going to use Mistrevis. I'm pretty much just doing this to get its heart gauge down, and that's it. So. Yes, so we got we got Floppy, the one that evolves into Ampharos. Yep, so. I like Ampharos a lot myself as well, uh, although I'm thinking I might end up using it in XD, so I'm probably going to try not to use it in this one just so that we have some, like, some difference, some uniqueness between the teams. It's probably one of the better electric types you can get, though, between the two games, so... 
Uh, there's more variety in electric types in uh, XD than there is in this one, but it works pretty good in this one. So, all right, let's get rid of this Oddish or get Hyper Mode. That's fine too, I guess. Oh no, it's using my strategy against me. <laughs> yeah, the pink sheep. Uh, just a regular playthrough, yeah. And nothing too special, just gonna catch as many as I can. I'm gonna try to catch all all the Shadow Pokémon and then uh, purify as many as I can. I don't know if I'm gonna get them all done, but um, yeah, nothing too special. So. Miss Magius is one of your favorite ghosts. Yeah, I like Miss Magius as well. Um, I feel like Mistrevis got a lot better once it got the evolution, at least in my eyes. So... Probably with the extra crit, we should be able to knock out the Oddish, and I need to start swapping some other people in here. Let's get Fluffy in here so I can get a participation credit. Because Slugma's sleeping on the job and doesn't have Flamethrower, so we'll, uh, we'll work on someone else instead. Here, distracted, but here. <laughs> you were thinking about doing a 100% playthrough, but it takes... Ah, uh, yeah, 100% playthrough in either of these games is rough. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Now, is that just 100% story mode, or is that 100% story and battle mode? Because if you're talking story and battle mode, that's a whole different monster. <laughs> We're going to look at battle mode a little bit in this one, but only to help out a little with the story mode. There's, uh, there's a way you can use battle mode to save you on a little bit of grinding that I'll uh, try to demonstrate. So. Yeah, the whole gang's here! Let's go! <laughs> Got a busy chat today. I'm surprised. We've got, uh, what would that be, like one, two, three, four, five, probably like six people here. Not bad, thank you for coming, everybody. I appreciate it. Let's see what you can do there, Fluffy. Yeah, I was gonna say, you only got like 34 attack, that's not gonna do. A chunk. Uh, that's a Dust Ox. I should probably focus on killing Dust Ox, shouldn't I? That did nothing for your bar, though. Uh, switching you into battle, so you must have, like, a non-fighting nature. Maybe you're timid. That would actually be a fairly decent nature for a Fluffy in this one. I mean, it's not, like, super defensive, I guess, but it's probably not too bad. Uh, let's get Espeon in here. That'll let us get rid of the Dust Ox a little easier. We'll just keep spamming Shadow Rush with Hyper Mode and Strebus, and then I'll call it and I'll switch it out once we get rid of the Dust Ox. You're thinking mainly all mons, all purifications, and get ho -Oh. Yeah, that sounds about right. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, I think there's a lot of walking around that you do in that one, because you have to... Uh, there's no way to purify using, like, the purify chamber in this one. You have to purify everything manually. Uh, so walking around and using the cologne is probably your best bet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty doable. I would say go for it if you're, you know, if you're getting the itch, if you're getting the urge to play this again. I say it's a worthwhile uh, little challenge. Just remember, if I recall correctly, you have to beat Mount Battle in battle mode in order to get Ho-Oh in this one. If I remember right. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's how it works, so... No, oh, there's an extra point of special attack I was talking about. <laughs> Aw, it's a wake. Damn. Well, it's fine. It's mostly just spamming Cod Spore, so... Big deal. That is correct? Okay. Gotcha, Marie. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. I'm learning. I'm dodging into attacks to get perfect dodges to get MP back. Nice! That's all That's all good. That'll be good muscle memory for you to have for any other souls likes you get, because oftentimes you want to dodge into an attack anyway. Uh, you dodge into the weapon arm, you're usually in pretty good shape. So. But yeah, if you could do... Again, I'm not 100% sure about where you get Ho-Oh from. I think you have to do it in battle mode, but I'm not 100% sure. If it was in story mode, though, that would be a lot more doable because... Uh, well, we're going to be looking at all of Mount Battle in story mode on this one. And the Pokémon in Mount Battle in story mode on this one are a lot easier to deal with, so... Yeah. So if, if you can do that, then that'd be good. But uh, as far as I'm aware, you have to do it in, ba in uh, battle mode, so... If Marie and I are correct. So, now let's taunt them. So we can't keep sleep powdering everyone. Yeah, that's probably good. 
I could get Slugma back out here and try yawning again, but, uh... Eh, it's fine. I'll just toss a ball. I'll just toss a Great Ball, because I didn't status it. Uh, actually, I might get Slugma out here just as something to do if this Great Ball doesn't work. So... Thinking that everybody purified everyone immediately, and someone was like, what if I use overpowered Pokémon myself, since then everyone used Shadow Pokémon? <laughs> something like that, yeah. Because all of a sudden they're like, oh wow, we got this base 90 power physical move that just has no type disadvantages? Sign me up! <laughs> so. Don't get a whole lot of money from these guys, unfortunately. Uh, Pokeballs kind of eat into your profits pretty good in this game if you're not using the glitch, so. Which uh, I will not be using the glitch. I demonstrated it on the last episode, if anyone's curious, uh, when we caught Croconaw. About, I want to say about an hour in, I demonstrated it. So if you want to see it, it's over there. Uh, if not, well, uh, I probably won't be showing it again, so. <laughs> Alright, so Fluffy, you got nothing from switching into battle, so I guess we'll just keep you hanging around in the party, because that works pretty good. Uh, so we'll swap you guys out, we'll go heal and save again, we'll fight Divil again. And then we'll catch the last Shadow Pokémon here in the square, and then after that, I think we'll go make our challenge. Gonna have to figure out which team we're taking in with us. Not that it really matters too much, because out of all of the Shadow Pokémon we've snagged so far, the only one that I actually am gonna use going forward is Croconaw, so... The rest of them, it's like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll purify them if I can, but if not, eh. Uh, let's see. And none of you are ready to go in terms of... Uh, this stuff. Yeah, that did pretty good, actually, just walking around there. I forget how many steps you have to take for the heart gauge to move in this one. I don't think it's too many, though. I mean, we walked from Dueling Square to here, and it did pretty good. So. You do get infinite money from battling, yeah. So if you keep battling over and over again, you can basically just get infinite money if you want it. But, excuse me, Nora. But I'm uh, going to try not to... Uh, grind too much in this one. Because that just makes the game too easy for my liking. I say as I'm ready to go battle Divil again for the third time this episode. <laughs> yeah, I cree. I cree every time for my, for my wallet. Especially when I spend on something big. Just wait till we get to buy some TMs later in the game. You want to hear me cry about my wallet? There you go. <laughs> so. Yeah, you hypocrite! <laughs> How could you do this? I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> yeah, this battle's easy, so just, we'll just do it. Work on Croconaw a little bit. I'm gonna purify him later, and he's gonna get to, like, level 34 or some shit. Because <laughs> he's just been in, like, most of the battles we've been in at this point. Now, if you really wanted to, you didn't have to, like, have all your Shadow Pokémon participate in each of the battles. You could, theoretically, just use Espeon and Umbreon for these first few episodes to the point where you get them to, like... I think when I was younger I did that. I got them to, like, level 36 by the end of... Uh, by the end of your time in Pyrite Town, you could get them up to, like, level 36 if you do a little grinding. And that lets them get some uh, pretty decent attacks. Excuse me. It gets uh, Espeon uh, Psybeam to use over Confusion, so you can delete Confusion for that. And then it gets Umbreon Faint Attack, which has the same power as Bite, but instead of flinching the opponent, it never misses. So... I probably won't replace Bite with Faint Attack in this one, just because they're the same power and Bite has that flinch chance, and, well, uh, spoiler alert for a little later, but we're going to be using Thunder Wave as our main status that we use against Shadow Pokémon, uh, and Para Flinching is pretty good, so... But, yeah, I probably won't replace Bite because of that. Uh, we saved, so... At least I think we did. Yeah, watch him later beating the same guy like a million times. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm gonna try not to abuse it too much. I just wanna account for Croconaw's weaker special attack. You know what'll be funny though, is depending on how many times I fight Divil, 
we'll go to like purify Krakenaw in like three or four episodes there, and he'll just get like 12 special attack when he levels up or something from all the EVs kicking in immediately. <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this is another uh, good battle to have synchronized proc, by the way, because Noctowl is a shadow Pokemon. But in addition to that, it can also use Hypnosis, if I remember correctly. So uh, if it uses Hypnosis, you can proc a Synchronize, which will allow you to uh, put it to sleep, which is pretty good. So, Yeah, oh boy, buff Croconaw. <laughs> the biggest brained Croconaw in the universe. Yeah, Noctowl's physical attack, eh, not so great. Leaves a little bit to be desired, I guess. Let's see how much this does to Lediva. Pretty good. Helping hand is good. <laughs> As it turns out, helping hand is pretty useful when the only type of battle in the whole game is double battles. Um, can Espeon KO a Wingull with confusion? Probably? I'm gonna try it, I guess. Um, let's see. Let's just bite the knockout. We'll get a little bit of extra damage. Lifeblood says no. Let's see who's right. Aha! See, that's that extra special attack point that I got from the, the fights there. <laughs> oh boy. Come on, hit me! Use that hypnosis on me. I want to be put to sleep because I can cure it easily and. You can't. <laughs> Alright, helping hand bite a go-go. Ah, crap. It's a good thing we weren't betting any money. Oh, boy. Oh, well, there he goes. wonder if I can get a Pokeball all the way up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, how about a Reflect? And then... Well, Umbreon will go after Noctowl this turn, so I should be able to get Bite off this turn. Won't be a helping-handed version, but, you know. Yeah, Fly, uh, Fly's animation glitches out in this game a little bit. The uh, Pokémon seems to stop and use its idle pose while in midair instead of continuously flying like it did in Stadium. I don't know why that happens. It's probably not good, but... Eh. Hey, if that's the worst the Genius Sonority does, then I'll take it, you know? The rest of this game is pretty damn good to begin with, so... Ah, giving you some ideas, I see. Well, we probably won't get to proc a synchronized uh, sleep this time, but... Actually, thinking about it, though, we might not even be able to do that at all, because uh, this Noctowl might have... Insomnia as its ability, which would prevent it from going to sleep altogether, even if synchronized. So, yeah, I didn't think about that one. Huh. Well, there you go. Uh, let's see. Since that's the case, let's taunt it. Just to force it to proc up against my reflect. Uh, prop up against my reflect, I should say. Proc isn't the correct word for that particular sentence. Aww. A little feisty today, eh, Noctowl? Well, we're not going to be doing any of that anymore. Stop that. Now, I believe Taunt lasts three turns, so it'll last uh, the turn that it was used and then two additional turns. So, just keep that in mind and I'll use it at some point after this. Alright, well, that's $1,200 down the drain. Let's see if it goes any worse for me. It's alright, though. We've got... Uh, a little bit of time before we need to spend all that money again, so. Unfortunately, in this one, you can't raise accuracy by, uh, what's it called? By calling your Pokemon. I'm gonna try a Pokeball. Nah, I don't think so, Lifeblood. I think everybody's just, uh, either doing other stuff or they're, uh, they're just watching. They're just hanging out. The lurking. That did not work. Well, it fixed his flying animation, so <laughs> fair enough, I guess. Just dying in no beta. <laughs> this knocked owl can't hit that fly for shit, man. That sucks. Sorry to see. Sorry to see that knocked owl, but 
All right, well, let's reflect. I'll toss another Pokeball. <laughs> lurking in bed. <laughs> Fair enough, Frank. That's a good place to be lurking. And again, for you, it's like, what, 10 o'clock at night at this point? So, yeah. It's a bit of a ways ahead of the rest of, well, uh, me over here specifically, because I'm only at 5 o'clock, bro. So. About a dozen attempts into the first boss. Oh, you get juggled in this game? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, 11 for you. Okay, yeah, even later. Wow. I must be thinking of, uh, of Grand Meridian time, and I think you're GMT plus one, now that I think about it. So. That's my bad. Uh, Pokeball. I could use the Premier Ball, actually, just to get rid of it. I don't care. I'll just throw balls. Excuse me. Makes me wish I had Thunder Wave at this point, but, well, we won't be having that just yet. There you go. He was just waiting for the correct ball. Fair enough. <laughs> He's like, nope, you wanna, you're want you going to want to catch me in the promotional ball, man. I have high standards. <laughs> All right, fine, Knocked Owl. will be that way. So you're GMT plus one. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. And yeah, I already mentioned this one, but yeah, if they're in hyper mode, they're... Um, oops, I double-tapped A. Uh, Shadow Rush specifically has a higher likelihood of being a critical hit, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. We'll be using it for a few things, uh, namely against the major boss of the first area, but we'll work on that later. Uh, let's see here. Do I want to battle Street Performer Diogo before we go? Because we're still in pretty decent shape. Yeah, we'll battle her so I can demonstrate the uh, her replacement team before we go to the thing. Sure, why not? I'm probably going to swap Umbreon in, though. Because, uh... She has two Pokémon that have a type advantage against Croconaw, so we'll just get him in for participation credit, and then... We'll swap him. And do other stuff with Shroomish and Pichu. Ah, it's 11 for you as well, Lifeblood? Okay, gotcha. You guys are all ahead of me on the time. That's okay. Um, I should be able to KO Pichu with Confusion. Let's just switch. That'll work. My man Sniper there looked like he was using the mind-reading pin and the world ends with you. He's sitting there like, Open up your senses. Sorry, I can't do a good Neku voice, unfortunately. Ah, but... Ah, you know how it goes. Yes, Frank and everybody else is watching from the future. And Conker's watching from the past. How does time travel work? I don't know, time's relative. <laughs> I got nothing, you figure it out. <laughs> the three people in chat four with Mono, yes. Mono, you're wanted on line four? At least it's not clean up in aisle five. Good lord. Okay, but yeah, so Pichu gives one speed EV, and Shroomish gives one HP EV. So, between that and Divil's Pokémon, you got your special attacker. <laughs> so. Their Pokémon, by the way, will stay the same for quite some time in the game. Uh, they don't update until not the end of this area, but the end of the following section of the game. Basically, the... Uh, there's four major bosses that you beat before you start thinking about going to the end game. Once you beat the second boss out of the four, uh, the first of which is here in Pyrite Town, uh, once you beat the second boss out of the four, that's when their Pokémon will update, and then they'll get a little stronger and give you more EVs, so that'll be fun. <laughs> so. Uh, why don't we stay at the Grand Hotel, just for the hell of it, right? I mean, we're, we're getting ready to do our Coliseum Challenge, so let's go stay at the Grand Hotel. Yeah, speed tank, go for it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Not normally a very good idea, but... Hey, I'm not worried about getting, like, the EVs to be maximum or anything like that. Like, 4 HP, 252 special attack, 252 speed... No, we're not worried about that. Just... Special attack, speed, a little HP, while we're at it. Hey, 
I'll take it. But yeah, there's no animation or anything for the Grand Hotel. It's basically just like using a Pokemon Center, so there you go. In order to advance the plot, we need to go in here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'd love to, but they definitely won't let me, so... No, of course there isn't. Like this button. Ah, I have surpassed the lookout. Let's go see what's in here. Oh, somebody's secret hideout. Okay. Hi. Uh, your lookout isn't very good at being a lookout. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. You gonna play house in here? I mean, I guess this place is kind of peaceful, considering what's outside, so... Sure, we'll call ourselves his friends. Oh, okay. Fair enough, I'll go see if I can find something else to do. I'm just trying to kill time until the Coliseum Challenge opens back up again, so... Does anyone EV train in a casual Pokemon run? Uh, I usually don't bother, because usually you get enough EVs just from playing the game and, you know, doing everything, you know, standard. But, uh... And this one, just I'm just trying to account for Croconaw's lower special attack nature, because he's going to be a special attacker, so... Oh. Well, I mean, you're right, so... Yeah, I don't know about that. They're probably blackmailing him, man. Maybe you need to dig for some more dirt. Get the police officers to help you with that or something. Okay, so that's Silva. Hmm. He seems to have a bit of a chip on his shoulder, Duking. Yeah, alright, fair enough. <laughs> you look busy, with your arms crossed and no work on your desk. <laughs> I ain't here to throw shade, though. Let's go see if the Coliseum Challenge is open now. Actually, I think this activates an event that you have to do that then opens it up. Yeah, here you go. Uh, oh. Okay. Sir, are you alright? Good lord. Oh, okay. Hang on, let me go see what's going on. Yeah, there is water, so that's fairly good. You know, more peaceful. More water than you usually see here, so. Are you okay? <laughs> 30 long years of grinding gears, and I ain't been injured on the job once. Then this punk comes in and smacks me over the head with a tire iron, and now I'm gonna have to take my retirement early. <laughs> oh, great. Well, that's not good. Okay, good. He didn't, he didn't actually hit him with a tire iron. That was just me. Uh, I guess channeling my inner Gordon Freeman. <laughs> well, apparently he just wants to do something that seems like base revenge to try to get Duking to do something. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm glad you'll be okay. Sure, why not? I came in here to rescue you after all, so... Yeah, I imagine Mirror B would make this place a living hell if the Coliseum couldn't function, so... Okay, I'll see what I can do. Anybody have any ideas of where it could have gone? Hmm. Probably. Hmm. Well, I don't know if they specifically tell you where you can find the gear. Uh, this guy might give us a clue. Nope, apparently not. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't know if they specifically tell you where you can find the gear, but I know where it is, so... We've seen a few gears, now that I think about it, as we've gone through the towns, so... I guess we'll just go check them until we find the right one. Actually, Kale might be able to tell us. Hmm. Yeah, probably best for me, but hey, I never listen to anything that's for the good of my health in this game anyway, so... <laughs> so... You beat the first boss. I suck at this genre and love it. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> Good on you, Marie. No one purposely EV trains in casual runs, only in Nuzlocks or mods like Renegade Platinum. Hacks not mods, forgot terminology. Oh, that's okay, but yeah, you're pretty much right. The vast majority of people don't bother with EV training, at least from my experience with people. Um, they've said, no, I don't even bother usually with EV training. It's only like if they're doing competitive stuff or if it's in like a challenging hack of some kind, you know, so. You've never done a Nuzlocke? Uh, well, I've tried a few of them, but I've never completed one myself, so I'm kind of in the same boat. Only done a few and finished none of them. <laughs> so I'm in the same boat as Marie, then. There you go. Uh, where did we see a gear? We saw a gear at Outskirts Stand. I guess we could go check that. 
but the gear's in the construction lot, but I'll just pretend like we don't know that. So, Because, hey, maybe they just need a replacement. Well, this one's junk, unfortunately, so that's not going to work. Next place. Back to the construction lot. I probably should have bought some ball, uh, Pokeballs while I was there, though. That outskirt stand. How am I doing on Pokeballs, anyway? Because we're going to need a few... Seven and six. Eh, I should probably buy some more. I'll worry about that in a minute. Hey, man, what's up? Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that seems a little strange. I don't know why you'd do that, but yeah, so the big shining gear. If you didn't know where to find it before this, you can basically see this right from the entrance. Here's the gear that uh, Silva made off with, so... Best wild Pokemon you can catch that's not legendary. Anything that's a pseudo legendary, I would say. So like you got your, you got your uh, your Gaibol, you got your uh, Bagon, you got your Larvitar, Tratini, that sort of stuff. Usually they come out pretty good. So if you're talking about this game, um, yeah, I mean there's there's a a few pseudo legendaries you can catch in the end game, but. Yeah, we'll, we'll find some stuff that's halfway decent, I guess. Anything with a ton of utility, to be honest. Yeah, pretty much. Man, everybody's coming in that uh, hasn't been here in a while. Drum, hello, welcome. Thank you for gifting all of these Tier 1 subs. I appreciate those. Uh, so that makes Frank, Marie, and Lifeblood all Tier 1 subs. Drum, thank you. Appreciate those. That'll uh, push us pretty close to... They might even push us over the edge for my first paycheck. That'll be pretty good. So yeah, thanks, Drum. He's become monochromatic. In your opinion, a level 60 Hydreigon in X and Y? Yeah, that's a pretty good catch, yeah. <laughs> that'll that'll definitely do you some good, so... I might, I might have to sell Torment at some point. I don't think I'm going to use it. And it's worth 1,500, so... Yeah, I might sell it in a little bit. Uh, but let's buy a few more of these. Let's buy maybe three of these. And then a few of these. Uh, can I get nine? I can get nine. Okay, perfect. Let's grab all of them. End up spending more money on Pokeballs in this game than you do on uh, actual healing items. Oh, well. <laughs> Frank got access to the emote. Yes, everybody should have access to the mono thonking emote that just got a sub, so... Nuzlocks are fun. You did quite a bit. They're always so messy. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they always end up being a little bit... Uh, th there's a few moments in some of the Nuzlocks that always end up a little bit uh, tricky. That's for sure. So, Colosseum is one of your favorite Pokemon games. It forces you to use Pokemon you would never use normally. That is true, Drum. And uh, Well, I'll be using a few Pokemon that I use normally, but I'll be using a few that I usually don't as well. So it'll we'll have a nice mixture. But yes, thanks for stopping by, Drum. Appreciate all of the help with the subs and everything. How you doing? Welcome back. So, let's see. It's one of... Here's a challenge. Use the Horde system in Sun and Moon to get the level 12 or the level 9 Salamence. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think... Was that in... Yeah, it was in Sun and Moon because you can encounter, like, a horde of... Is it a horde of Bagon? And then you encounter Salamence after that? I forget how that works exactly, so... But yeah, that exists, yep. I don't even know what a Salamence would know at level 8 or 9, to be honest. That seems like a lot. Uh, Divil? <laughs> I have my Pokémon set up at this point, so let me battle you before I give the gear back. <laughs> oh, an SOS, okay, yeah. Yeah, the 3DS era, I, I get it. For me, it's kind of fuzzy as well, because all, this, all the games sort of blend together. I mainly just did, like, metagame stuff after I beat the games in, uh, Gen 6 and 7, now that I think about it, so. Although I was pretty much off of metagame stuff by the time Gen 7 rolled around, so. Excuse me. Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot with those at that point. <laughs> Here we go again! <laughs> hey, at least Divil's getting some mileage out of it. He gets, I mean, everybody gets free health insurance in this, uh, in this universe, but for their Pokemon, but we're getting some mileage out of that Pokemon Center, that's for sure. 
So how many times have we fought Devil at this point? Is this four? So that's two free special attack points for Croconaw once he uh, starts getting levels later. That's pretty good. Uh, but after this, we probably won't be doing this for quite a while, actually, because once we go to the Coliseum to start the next event, uh, we end up basically getting thrown into a few other things that we can do. So, like, uh, it throws us into the next dungeon, and then there's another dungeon after that, so we won't really be coming out here for some time unless we're buying Pokeballs, so... Yeah. These animations have got so much more soul than Sword and Shield. Yeah, I, I do enjoy the animations in this game quite a bit. Um, they use the stuff that uh, HAL Laboratory actually worked on Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, and they use, uh, Genius Sonority uses that as a backdrop for both the old animations, which they imported into this game, and then the new animations that they added with the entirely new models that they made for the Gen 3 Pokemon, so. It's pretty good. I like it quite a bit. No, well, apparently Duking has uh, actually got up off his ass to help out now that one of his townsfolk got injured. Well, I mean, he just doesn't want the town to be run by criminals anymore, so... Hey, what's up? That's me. You people. You might be, because I do, yeah, in fact, have the gear for you, so... Well, I'm glad I earned your trust. It just took a little bit of running around, I guess. Sure, can do. One of the gears is missing. Well, let's fix that, shall we? You already have a double jump. That's cool and terrifying. <laughs> Best Pokemon gen, in your opinion, is the fifth gen. I think of, of the handheld games, because, like, Coliseum and XD are probably pretty far up there for me. They're probably one of my favorites. Um, and third gen, as well, is a pretty good time for me. That is a rusty-ass windmill, holy cow. But apparently it gets enough power for the whole Coliseum, so fair enough. Anyway, uh, yeah, I like Black and White too. It's probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite Pokemon game. At least on handheld, it's my favorite, so. Hmm, well, let's think about that one, shall we? Everybody has a favor for me, Duking, but sure, I'll hear you out. Well, I was going to do that anyway, so. All right, I can do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I need your help. You and everyone else. All right, I'll go on to the next challenge. Hopefully they're ready to take me for a challenge at this point, because, well, now that we got power restored, hopefully any uh, technical difficulties they were having with the last one are over, and now I can go in and get myself a, uh, a challenge run. Now, once you go in, there are, I think there's four battles in a row in here. Uh, back to back with no time to rest, but I believe you get your Pokemon healed in between each round, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, uh, I'm going to start with Espeon and Umbreon out, actually, uh, because they could use the experience. Specifically, Umbreon needs to catch up a little bit because he's almost a full level behind Espeon now. It's probably because I personally find Espeon to have better utility, but that's just me. Maybe it's just that Espeon can kill things, so that's why I usually keep it around. Yeah, if only the protagonist is there to help. Oh no! Not here! What are we going to do? What do we do if the protagonist isn't here to help? I don't know, that's a good question. Uh, how are we doing here? You should have a new move, right? Yeah. Oh, Confuse Ray, fantastic. Uh, we know your nature now. Impish is not good for Slugma at all, but fair enough. And yours we don't know yet. Alright, that's fine. Um, do I need anybody else here? So... We have a shared Bug-type weakness with Espeon and Umbreon, and actually the team doesn't really care too much about Bug-types with this, so... I mean, it's not like I'm going to be using type advantages anyway in here, because, well, most of these Pokémon only have Shadow Rush, so... I guess we'll just use what we've got. It should be alright. We just saved anyway, so... We'll see if it works. Oh, good, because I'd like to register! Uh, yes, please. And yes, I will. I will see what I can do. Oh, okay, I guess Nora's gonna hang around and sit in the stands and cheer us on. Let's hope there aren't any shadow Pokemon for her to look out for for me. All right, Pyrite Coliseum, battle one. 
let's see what the challengers bring to the table in this one. See what I mean, though? Back problems. These guys are going to have back pro He can't even, like, get his back to arch straight up so he can put his hand up in the air and wave anymore. <laughs> You guys need better posture. Seriously. Okay, well these guys are a little tricky to deal with because they they're a little bit higher level, but we'll we'll be okay, I think. Most of the time you just replay third gen with challenge runs, currently doing a passive damage only challenge like spikes, rough skin, etc. It takes forever though. Alright, Frank, take it easy. Yeah, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Go go get some sleep though. <laughs> Sounds hard as shit. <laughs> Yeah, well, just using residual damage, yeah, I could see how that would be a little bit tricky to deal with, you know. Um, I think I'm going to put up a Reflect, because both of these are physical, so. And then let's start working on the Sandshrew. And then we'll probably KO it next turn, once I get Reflect up. This game has counter magic. You can almost see the sparkles in my eyes. <laughs> using the Ring of the Lucy Eye next, or something like that. Tell me, yep, I just used Super Holy! <laughs> Practically. Uh, okay, I was gonna say, what's the uh, extra effect for secret power in here? But it didn't proc, so we'll, we'll figure it out a different turn. No big deal. Uh, but with Reflect Up, though, things should go pretty smoothly for us for now, because, well, I mean, we're not taking a whole lot of damage. We would be taking more, but, well, that's what Reflect is for. Big, big damage reduction, so. I just love the random comments. <laughs> well, Marie's got some uh, color commentary going on of her own over there, so. From the, uh, from the Souls-like that she's playing. So that's fun. Adds to the variety, that's for sure. Ah, so it's confusion in here. Okay. Um, Barboach probably gives HP, if I had to guess, which I guess I can give to Krakenau. That's fine. We'll just get confusion the hell out of the way. And I just keep biting. Eventually it'll flinch, maybe. Let's see it. Okay, good damage. We'll finish this up next round. Yes, there's the flinch, perfect. And um I'm trying to think if I want to get Krokin on to hyper mode at any point here. I guess it can't hurt. I'm surprised that actually did it on command, as if I knew that was going to happen. But it doesn't always happen, but I think uh, Jolly Nature has an increased chance of it to happen. I can vote. I mean, I've got the strategy guide right next to me, so I can, I can see how this all affects it. Jolly has an increased chance, yes, of getting into hyper mode when you use Shadow Rush, so that'll give us a little bit of a critical hit ratio. Not too bad. Have I ever played Hollow Knight? No, but it is on my list of things to do at some point. Uh, probably going to play it for the stream blind uh, at some point in the near future, once I'm done with all these GameCube games I'm doing. i got a lot of games that I want to go through once I'm done with those, though, so... We'll, we'll get to it. It just might be an eventual thing, so... Alright, Battle 2. Let's see what this net one's got next. See, she's got better posture. Look, she can stand up straight and scrunch over. Come on, guys, you gotta... Everybody's gotta stand up straight. That's the point. It's better for your backs. Okay, Natsu and Meditite. Well, as long as Meditite doesn't have a fighting-type move, I think we'll be okay. But we'll see. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the, uh... The Colosseum music changes depending on which battle you're in, and because of that, in the next battle, I'm most likely going to turn the music up because the next battle's theme is probably one of my favorites in the game, so. Perfect, I cannot wait. <laughs> Hollow Knight is fun, would also recommend. Yeah, oh, don't worry. We'll get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be too long, but we'll get to it. Yeah, this game's OST is fantastic. I, I love, like... Tsukasa Tawada, I've only heard his work in this game and in XD, and he's still a composer that I definitely 100% like love. He's, he's up there for me with like Shoji Maguro and Masashi Hamaos and Yoko Shimamura, all the good ones. 
uh, Nobuo. Well, Nobuo is kind of in a, st a place of his own, to be honest. <laughs> it's kind of hard to rival Nobuo and Matsu in my book, but they're pretty close. Yoko Shimomura is probably the closest out of anyone to getting to uh, Nobuo's composing status for me. He's, he's, he's basically a deity in my eyes, so... <laughs> but she's pretty damn close. <laughs> so... Oh, curves are trending, no one's gonna stand straight. Yeah, well, that that could be a bit of a problem, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. They gotta show the curves where they can. Certain parts of their body are still all blocky polygons. Not quite as blocky as in Skies of Arcadia, but... Well, don't worry about that game, we'll get to that sometime here soon as well. Sooner than Hollow Knight, unfortunately, for everyone who wants to see Hollow Knight, because, well, Hollow Knight we'll be getting to after we're done with all the GameCube stuff, but Skies of Arcadia is on the GameCube, so you know what that means. Oh, more special attack, that's good. And we're learning Swift. Um, do I want Swift over Return? Hmm. So Swift's uh, banking selling point, basically, is that it never misses. It's physical in this game, though, instead of special, so SBM can't use it as well. Um, it's that or a base 102 power return. Which has been doing pretty decent for us to begin with. Uh, Swift would give us access to a move that hits both opponents. But we have Surf for that, so I think I'll keep return. Uh, yeah, we don't need Swift. We'll wait for Umbreon to get something at level 30 and we'll see if that's worthwhile. Well, 4 HP though, that's not too bad. I'll take it. You're always vibing to Kingdom Hearts music. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts music is a pretty easy one to vibe to, so. They're hunching over to assert dominance. It doesn't always work, though. That's T-posing. What if both, though? <laughs> what if they did both? I think the Coliseum would implode, so. Okay, semi-final match. We're almost to the top. Let's see what this second-to-last match has in store for us. Oh, look, somebody who can pretty much stand up straight. All right, I'm turning the music up. That one's really good. Always loved that track. There's just so many layers to it, right? There's the, the synth guitar screeching in the foreground, there's the bass underlying to it, they've got the the keyboard going in the background with the beat a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit of it. It's just so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um so I don't want to make contact with Electrike because it's is it Electric? Electric key? I don't know. I don't want to make contact with it because it probably has static, so let's just use this. I don't think Secret Power makes contact, so... I'm gonna say Electric. I don't know if it's right or not, but I'm gonna say Electric. <laughs> hey, Amarella, how's it going? Welcome back. We're taking on the Pyrite Coliseum Challenge, and we're on Battle 3 listening to some awesome music while we beat up this guy, this bandana guy's Pokemon. Your tactics confuse and frighten me, sir. Yeah, trying desperately to T-pose and hunch at the same time to assert dominance. 
Yeah, good vibes all around, that's for sure. So we had this only plays during the semifinals of a knockout challenge. Yeah, it's it's not very not used very much, which is kind of a shame. Uh, I know what they say. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder, and so I can appreciate that for this track because not hearing it for so long, yeah, <laughs> I like to hear it when it shows up, but still, it's only played pretty rarely, so kind of a shame. But when it comes up, you better believe I'm turning the music up. <laughs> so. Going good. Two days in and already wrapped up the main thing of No Man's Sky's new expedition. Oh, nice. I didn't even know it got a new uh, update. I have yet to play that for myself. I um, I know they made it a lot better than it used to be. Like, they actually put in a whole bunch of work to make it better than it was. So I've yet to try it since they did that, though. So uh, Vulpix has higher special defense, so I'm going to try using physical attacks instead. See if it does us some good. Got a nice little base that's far from complete, but looking nice with the new building box. Cool. Sounds good, Amarella. Sounds like you put in a decent chunk of work. And it's always good to see that come to fruition, so... That's good. That also works, because double-teaming the Vulpix with physical attacks made it faint. So that's good for me, I guess. It takes me to the final round, so... Like five days since the latest update, the expedition started two days ago on the 6th, which is basically a Diablo 3 season. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> oh, boy. Random topic, Monster Hunter, anyone? Uh, probably Conquer would be the one to talk to for that. I have only played... The only Monster Hunter game I've played is the demo of World. I never got to play World itself. So, yeah, Conquer would probably be the one to talk to for that. Uh, maybe Adam as well? I forget. I seem to remember somebody else talking about Monster Hunter when they've been here. Anyway, we're in the final round against Bodybuilder Mirez. Sounds like we're missing about half of your name there, sir, but okay, fair enough. We got a Goldeen, we got a Bagon. Is this the fuck you, Goldeen? Or is that a fuck you, Seeking? I seem to remember there being either a Goldeen or a Seeking in one of these challenges that knows Horn Drill, which is terrifying because we're a lower level. I'm just gonna double team it and hope for the best. <laughs> so. Who am a boy here? <laughs> so Drum apparently knows a little about Monster Hunter as well, if that's talking about hammers as a weapon. So Conquer plays Monster Hunter, but not recently, gotcha. Last one took you like the full two months to finish, but this one for some reason you're just like, BAM, done. <laughs> now fair enough. That uh you know, if if you enjoy what you're doing, that's the important part, and that means you'll get through it pretty quick, so. Gotta make it last and everything, you know, but that's okay. All right, so Magnemite's gonna be the tricky one for us because we don't have anything in particular on Espeon or Umbreon that KOs it reliably. So we'll probably swap in, I don't know, somebody to spam Shadow Rush, but let's take care of his other Pokemon first. Best monster, I think it's Nursilla. That's a tough question, I have to think on it a bit. Nursilla was the spider from 4U, yes, okay, gotcha. I, I wouldn't be able to answer that one, but we have some people who know what they're talking about in the chat, so that's good. Ooh, a level 34 Delibird. That's... I'm going to need to double-team that for sure. Actually, no, because this is going to do some damage now. <laughs> Gen 3 strats. Attack the Pokemon before it even comes out. <laughs> so. You're a Sword and Shield main? Okay, gotcha. See, I, um... The only weapon that I've used so far when I play the demo of World was the bow and arrow, so... Or just the bow, I don't know if it's bow and arrow. So. You're a switch axe main? Okay, gotcha. We got a nice little team going here so far. We got a switch axe, we got sword and shield, we got a bow. I forget what Conquer uses as his main. I can't even say I main anything, though, because, well, I <laughs> haven't really played much Monster Hunter, so... Ooh, a flinch. I'll take that. Um, we have a hyper mode croc and aw. And we're going to get thunder shocked on the way in. Now I got to switch croc and and Magnemite gives a special attack EV, I think. So, we'll swap him in. Best monster, in your opinion, would be Brachidios? Okay, gotcha. I think I've heard about Brachidios before. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Monster Hunter's lacking an insect-like monster, sadly. Chitin always looks good on armor. That would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, he's having a more insectoid monster, so. Your main would probably be Longsword. Gotcha. Celtus is really cool. I don't know 
what Celtis is. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look back at chat at some point here. I'm gonna be like I'm gonna look what all these things look like and be like, oh my god, these are so cool. <laughs> Um, do I want to use Surf? Or do I want to just spam Shadow Rush? I mean, I'm in Hyper Mode, so... I suppose spamming Shadow Rush would be the thing that makes the most sense to do, so... Yeah, excuse me. Because that crit will definitely help us with that, so... Get it out of here before it spams Thundershock on Krakenau. What the fuck? There are dolls that are dual wielding swords here. Oh, we're getting into some near shit now. <laughs> oh boy. There really aren't too many insect monsters. There are a few, but not many. Gotcha. Yeah, they could uh, break into that market a little bit. Get some more insect monsters in here. It'd be cool if they had like a giant mantis or something. Like a Final Fantasy II enemy, except like 20 feet tall. <laughs> slow-moving sword arms. We beat the Pyrite Coliseum Challenge. And they give us a nice little cash prize as well. Awesome. And they give us TM6 Toxic as well. I'm not sure if I'm gonna teach that to Umbreon or not. It would be a good move for Umbreon to have, but it's kind of difficult because all of Umbreon's moves are pretty decent at the moment. Like, Secret Power's got some utility, Bite's definitely got some utility, and uh, Taunt and Snatch will be more useful the longer the game goes on, so... It's a tricky one. Yeah. Okay, well, they give you an opportunity to save after beating the challenge, so... I did. Yep, your turn next, man. I hope to see you on the other side. What is the other side, though? Well, let's go find out. Oh, there is a Praying Mantis thing. Okay. Where the hell did Freak even come from? Autocorrect, no clue. <laughs> there is a Mantis monster, though not the size you're thinking. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. I'll have to check in on that thing then at some point. I mean, I guess it makes sense. A mantis with the arms and everything, like, it makes sense as a monster that you definitely encounter in a Monster Hunter game, so. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take Makahita and I'm gonna move it over here to box two because it's ready to be purified. So we'll just keep all of the ones that are not ready to be purified yet. We'll keep them in this box and then we'll move everything. Eventually we'll have to keep, uh, some stuff in box two as well, but we'll keep all the stuff that's ready to be purified over here for now, I think. We'll go from there. Um, do I want to switch anybody before I go? Let's see. You're doing okay. You haven't really gone up at all. Actually, probably none of you have, because we haven't really walked all that much since the last time I checked. So. Uh, Impish. What works best on Impish? We know Slugma's nature, so that'll allow me to maybe, uh, Check and see what's best for it. Impish. The best thing to do in Impish is use it in battle. Okay. And included in your party is also net positive. So we'll keep Slugma in the party. I'm going to put Miss Drevis in here for now. And we'll take Furret out. So. Don't really think I'm going to use Miss Drevis all that much. So we'll, maybe we'll bring it back later. But for now, eh, we'll do that. And now let's save. Now that we're done with the challenge. Is that a Spooky Hita? Yeah, Spooky Hita indeed. He's not going to be so spooky once we take him to the purifying thing, but that's a little bit of a ways away yet. Excuse me, Nora. Nobita is fun. I hate having MP in this game, though. <laughs> oh, the Mantis has a mech, though? Oh my god. we we'll switch over to PC Twitch, but you're only on your PS4 at the moment. Oh, okay, gotcha. Love fighting that thing. Yeah, I mean, if it's lagging for you, Conquer, I'd say switch over to the PC, but, you know. It just pulls out the mech and your jaw drops in that first fight. <laughs> Does indeed have a mech, though. I've never fought it myself. Gotcha. Granbull was your MVP first playthrough. Stab return plows through almost everything. Oh my god, yeah. It's got 120 base attack power and it can use return. You can keep that thing alive. It will, it will truck right through everything, so... I don't know if we're going to have a strict, uh, strictly speaking MVP for this one, but... I mean, it'll probably be Espeon, to be fair, because dual screens are really good in this game, but... I'm gonna try to make, uh, Croconaw pretty good, but we'll see. Oh, boy. <laughs> this poor guy, he can never get his challenge going. Well, we won the challenge, let's... oh, okay. I was gonna say, let's go tell Duking that we won the challenge, but... Ah, uh, yeah, that was me. 
Ah, very good. What can I do? Take me to this man so I can get my prize. It's fun to fight, to be honest. Adept kind of bad for that fight, though, in your opinion. Someone who almost exclusively an adept player. <laughs> Gog Mazios is the best raid monster. The Lord Gog. <laughs> oh, boy. Hi there. Yes. Do I get a shadow Pokemon for winning? Can we talk about my sex appeal later? Oh my god. <laughs> ah, hell. My reputation has preceded me again. Maybe... <laughs> yeah, sure you will, buddy. Let's see it then. Alright, so now that they know who we are, Cypher Peon Nor will fight us. And he has a shadow Pokemon of his own. Uh, that Pineco scares the hell out of me. Because it could blow up. So. Gog was a cool monster. Only ever beat it once. You don't understand. Gog is amazing. <laughs> he is probably talking shit. Yeah, that's probably true. So. Okay. Pineco. I'm just gonna double team Pineco because I don't want it to boom, so. You understand me? <laughs> Yeah, that'll do. I'm not even worried about Yanma, to be honest. It's I mean, it can Shadow Rush, that's fine. I'll just put up a Reflect once I get rid of the, the boom over here. I just hope I don't. it doesn't get replaced by something else that can boom, like a coughing or something. Yuck. I mean, Espeon could handle that, but then I couldn't put a Reflect up, so... Alright, well, Pineco, I don't know what you were gonna do, but I don't want any. Whatever you're selling, I ain't buying. Ooh, that's not bad, too, and everything. I'll take that. And Umbreon can learn Confuse right here. Eh, I would rather have what I have now, I think, so. We'll just keep what we got. Okay, that's fine. Nikita is fine. I can handle that all day and all night. Uh, let's, so let's put up a Reflect, then. And let's see what Secret Power's extra effect is in the building here. It might just be the same as in the Coliseum, but eh, you never know. Should play your copy of For You again. The Shah Dalamater cutscene hits hard too. You still don't have Rise though. Yeah, because, I mean, one of these days, I think you said it was on your list of games to buy. Rise was, that is, so one of these days you'll have to get it. Yama and Golden Silver is just sad. Bug and Flying only learns Gust and Leech Life is stab moves. Yeah, it's it's not a good situation for Yanma all the way around. Um, it's better in Gen 4, but, I mean, you have to wait until Gen 4, so. Kind of blows a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna Super Potion. That did a, quite a bit of damage, Secret Power did to Yanma. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna like accidentally knock it out. Um, and Kada. It's probably gonna be undigging this turn. I'm just gonna throw a Great Ball and see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I use it up, so let's do that. Yes, and so was no beta. Okay, so you got one of the two then, at least. So that way you can you know, have one of those. Shot down water was a really cool fight. You can fangirl and you barely played. <laughs> no rise for us, yeah. Genuinely smiling, smiling right now. That's always a good thing, though. Always a good thing when you can play a game for a little bit and then be smiling about it later, you know. So. Yeah, no rise for me, no rise for you, no rise for lifeblood. Guess we gotta get our priorities straight here, don't we? Would play for you again, but your 3DS's circle pad is basically dead out. Oh, yeah, I mean that'll happen though with like action RPGs and action games. Is you'll you'll use that pretty often and it'll you know, it'll wear out a little bit. Um, I'll toss another great ball. If this one doesn't work, I'll probably just start tossing pokeballs again because those are a little bit uh, easier to replace in terms of my wallet. Gotta be careful because I did a surprisingly higher amount of damage with Secret Power than I expected. So I don't want to accidentally crit it and knock it out, you know. If you miss one of these Pokemon, don't worry about it too much because you can get them later. But in the case of Yanma here, it's way later. Like after the final boss later, so if I remember right. So yeah, we don't want to do that. We don't want to deal with that. You got murdered by a doll with swords. This game is crazy. 
This chat is amazing, to be honest. We're, we're quite active today, quite active and varied in terms of our topics we're talking about, so it's good. I like it. Oh, supersonic. Stop that right now. Um, how about we do this and then we taunt you so you can't supersonic me. I missed like a third of the Shadow Pokemon in the sequel. Doing all these refights. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough to catch everything, especially on the first go. So I don't know if we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna save scum in this game though. Like it's if we don't catch it, we don't catch it. I think I'll just you know catch it later if we don't catch it. You know, it's not a big deal. Sometimes I save scum though when I play Coliseum specifically and XD actually because it's easier to save scum in XD because you can save anywhere in that one, so. Alright, uh, I think it's about time we, uh, Reflect is still up, so. I think it's about time we started tossing Pokeballs, because, uh, Great Balls are still at a bit of a premium in terms of money. It's Taunt, so you can't keep supersonicing everyone, although I might not even get Taunt through, depending on how this goes. Excuse me. We ran out of Ultra Balls in the final area, didn't realize you should just go buy more. Anyone beat uh, Elatrion in World? Because you did not. No, stop playing World super early in Slack time. I heard Elatrion was very divisive. Beat it, but only with a group of friends. I think I've heard the name Elatrion somewhere. Probably from Cole. He's played World. Like, as far as I know, he's played all of World. He played, uh... I think he beat Iceborne as well, like its main campaign at the very least. Okay, there goes our Reflect. So that'll give me something to do this turn. That's good. I definitely need a status ailment, though. That's, like, it would really help with the catching stuff. Like, once I get paralysis or sleep, that'll really help us out with getting, uh, catching these shadow Pokemon easier than I am now. Statuses make a big difference when you're trying to catch stuff, believe it or not, so. So does getting it below half health, although in this case it only managed to make it rock three times, but that's okay. You're supposed to lean with it, rock with it there, Yanma. Then maybe I could catch you, but that's okay. And yeah, in this game, Uproar is considered a, uh, a physical move because it's normal type, so even though it is sound, so it'd be kind of hard for it to actually be physical. Took you three playthroughs to see that there's a second boss at Mirror V's hideout after you beat him. Oh yeah, we'll be covering that guy, don't you worry about that. <laughs> I didn't know about him the first time I played, though, either. It's not even mentioned in the guide here, if I remember right. I don't think it mentions it in this. I'm gonna look now while we're going to catch this stupid Yanma that keeps uproaring. Uh... Doesn't mention it in the in the section on the cave itself. So, and as far as I'm aware, there's no extras section here. I'll talk about later in the game. That's the one. Nope. And nope. Does not mention that boss at all. But don't worry, we'll be covering him. So, Yanma, can you just get in the damn ball already? <laughs> Like, Jesus! It's always three with you! Let's see. It's more fun in, gener in Generations, Generations Ultimate. Your friend group is a funny meme that we won't let die from the Elatrion fight. I'm gonna stand still, get shredded by the icicle attack. Oh boy. That sounds like fun. <laughs> gonna use half my Pokeballs just trying to catch this dragonfly. <laughs> Super annoying in World or Iceborne with the damage check. Oh, okay, gotcha. Hella annoying. Astro Generations. Couldn't beat it with your skill level at the time. Okay, gotcha. Every single fucking time! Why? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Oh my god. Anyway. Uh, I need to taunt it again. Well, that gives me something to do. I'm gonna throw another Great Ball. If it wants to rock three times at the Pokeball, then maybe the Great Ball will work, but knowing the way that this game works, it will rock once and then break out with this Great Ball, so... Because just because the ball is better, it rolls the same check every time you throw a ball. It doesn't matter the quality of it, it's just you have a higher amount of successes. See? There you go. 
Uh, you just have a higher amount of successes with a successively higher ball, so. Generations helped you truly get the Monster Hunter. You soloed hub enemies, meant to fall with other people because you need to stop being a scrub. I sucked. <laughs> play stories. One of your friends did, said it was super fun. It is. Didn't play stories. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of these games that I don't know anything about. Pretty much the entirety of the Monster Hunter franchise I know nothing about, so. Yeah, this Yanma is something else, so. He had a Tigrex that shot lightning from its claws. <laughs> Yanma would be like, I am the god of all balls. You cannot catch me, not with these small balls. You're getting XD PTSD? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm trying not to, but this Yanma is very uncooperative. I might try, if it doesn't Shadow Rush again, I might try hitting it with Secret Power again. I'm a little sketched out by doing that, though, because it's at half health, and we did a pretty good chunk before the Secret Power, so... You've soloed most quests in four Ultimate Generations World, Iceborne, and Rise, mostly because for different reasons you would, couldn't or wouldn't play in open lobbies. Gotcha. 30 Ultra Balls later, I can't fucking catch Shadow Pokemon. Four of five on an effing boss, because endgame sucked. <laughs> it takes a little while, that's for sure. Uh, another great ball. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to run out and grab more Pokeballs with my uh, my winnings here when we're done. Let's try Secret Power while we're at it. Actually, Bite probably would have no no Bite probably would have done about the same. Proud to say you have almost all the monsters soloed of all the monsters that you know of. Nice. That's that's a good accomplishment. That takes quite a bit of effort, I think. So. I'm talking out of my ass because I don't know anything about Monster Hunter, but I would imagine it takes quite a bit of effort to do that, so... That's cool. Alright, will this kill the Yanma? No. Good. Thank you, Umbreon. Uh, what's the extra effect? We won't find out today. That's fine. I'm gonna heal and then throw another... Actually, I'm gonna throw another ball and then I'm gonna heal. How about that? And then... This super potion... Yeah, this is the brunt of the the gameplay in Colosseum in some cases, unfortunately, is just tossing ball after ball after ball while getting uh, lambasted by the opponent's Pokémon. Because, I mean, this battle could have been over, what, ten turns ago or something? If this Yanma didn't keep breaking out of the ball, so... It's unfortunate, of course, because I'm trying to catch as many of these things as I can, but they're not exactly making it easy for me. <laughs> so... Uh, back to Pokeballs, and then do this. If we run it down, by the way, to like one Pokeball left or something, I'm just I'm just gonna use the glitch, I guess, because if the game wants to be this anal retentive about it, then I'll just fine game. I'll just use the glitch. If you want to be this way about it, you know, also trying not to, but. If, if I'm gonna use all my Pokeballs in a single battle, obviously I'm not gonna be able to buy more of them, which will put us in a bit of a predicament when we have to actually catch more of them, so... Ow. Okay, well, there it goes. Uh, is Reflect down? Or was it just because that was a crit? I think it was just because that was a crit, because that goes... that bypasses Reflect if it's a crit, so... Uh, let me heal Espeon real quick. Your solo bloodbath Diablos says that fight is my kryptonite. <laughs> Let's see, let me just see if there's anything else in here. Because y'all are talking about Monster Hunter, but that's okay. Sounds like you're gonna end up leaving this Yanma behind. It's a Yanma, it's not even that high of a catch rate if you remember correctly. This Yanma's also being a little shit. <laughs> yeah, but Shadow Pokemon, I know. We, we're trying to catch it as best as we can, and again, if we have to, I'll use the glitch to catch it because I don't feel like using all of my Pokeballs. We don't have to catch anything else in this building until later, but it doesn't mean I want to spend all my money again, you know? I'd like to save up some of my money for something eventually in the game. Like, there's a TMs that we can buy later that I'd like to save up for, but... If I, uh... You know... If I have to, I guess I'll just use the glitch because the game's being anal retentive about it. So... But I think you're right, it's catch rate isn't that high, so well, there goes Reflect. Let's use it again. And then I'll use up this Pokeball, and then I don't know, we'll go from there. Table flip. Didn't know about glitches in this game as a kid. Yeah, it, it helps quite a bit in this particular case, because 
there's it's easier in XD, I think, because there are certain Pokemon that you can use that have access to False Swipe. Finally, there we go, uh, which allows you to make sure a Pokemon remains on one HP, and you get access to status effects a little earlier in uh, XD than you do in this game. But yeah, well, I won the battle like ten minutes ago with you, man, and then all of a sudden it's just this Yanma. <laughs> Actually, let me look up Yanma's actual uh, catch rate. Hold on a second. I'm just going to turn chat off for like two seconds. Keep chatting, but let me check Yanma's catch rate. Um, let's see. Yanma. Google is recommending a tractor company from me searching for Yanma. That's fun. Yanma's catch rate is a 75. It is a 9.8% chance to be caught with a Pokeball at full HP. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, now that that train wreck is over with, uh, f that's fine. You guys can just escape. Fair enough. <laughs> Literally the effing Snorlax and XT all over again. <laughs> yeah, if you aren't looking it up on the internet, you probably wouldn't know about the glitches in this game. To be fair, and I mean, I didn't use the glitch when I first played this game because I didn't know about it. So. You might be able to solo Apex Rajang back then, which did try a couple of times. Do the solo mission with Apex, Diablos, Seragios, and Devil Joe. I don't know if I am pronouncing those right. <laughs> I remember those kids. Yeah, these kids are pretty important. We'll talk about them more later. So, Yeah, I entered this building like 20 minutes ago, but they definitely didn't want to give up their Yanma, so... Yep, pretty much. That would be them, yes. Not, a, not good optics for Pyrite Town, that's for sure. What, you didn't know? <laughs> the whole town has all these shadow Pokemon running rampant in it. Where did you think they were coming from? <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not good. Well, that could be a bit of a problem because, yeah, it, well, they might be more than mean to it there, Marsha. They might actually, I don't want to say it, but they might turn into a shadow Pokemon. So that's why you couldn't do anything about the Colosseum, because they're holding your Pokémon hostage. I knew it had to be, like, blackmail or something like that. Yeah, I think it's probably worthwhile. We get to take it to Mirror B for making that Yanma so resistant to capture, and we can rescue your puzzle for you. So, fair enough. Yeah, probably a good idea. We'll uh, we'll work our way through the building, and we'll let you know once we figure everything out. So, oh, don't worry. I'll be ready for the Sultan of Samba or the Sultan of Salsa. I don't know. I think they say salsa in the song when we uh, when we get to him. We found our first Ein file. Okay, so which one is this one? Ein file H is written on the cover. Let's take a look at what it says. Hyper Mode. Shadow Pokemon, perhaps because of their own overwhelming power, may behave abnormally at times. They may engage in such behavior as ignoring orders, even turning on their own trainers in battle. This I have named Hyper Mode. On the plus side, Hyper Mode raises the critical hit ratio of Shadow Rush. However, Hyper Mode also prevents the use of items on the Pokemon. Yeah, we didn't mention that just yet, but yeah, you can't use items on a Pokemon in Hyper Mode, so watch their HP. It's kind of not good. Hyper Mode is easily dispelled. Simply call the Pokemon by name. Excuse me. However, this method has a major drawback. Calling the Shadow Pokemon's name causes the closed door of its heart to loosen and even open. Further research is urgently needed. I wouldn't call that a drawback there, Shadow Pokemon Lab Chief Ein, but if you're trying to keep them Shadow Pokemon, then yeah, I guess I could see how that would be a problem for you, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, I think we can get to that PC and healing machine fairly easily, but I don't know if I want to take a risk. I think I might go back out. We'll go to the Coliseum and heal, and then we'll get over there. So that way it's less of a... Because I don't feel like going through all of that again to snag that Yanma, so... Yeah, we'll just do this. You're on PC now, no more of autocorrect being a little shit. Okay, good. <laughs> No, it's fine. You guys can chat about Monster Hunter if you want. It's no big deal. I'm not not concerned about it. I just can't interact directly with you about it because I don't know anything about Monster Hunter, so... But feel free to chat amongst yourselves if you want about that stuff. That's cool. I'm okay with it. That Yama was cursed. Good lord. 
Let's let's check it out here real quick. See what it's it's got pretty decent attack, all things considered. I mean, that's a pretty high attack score for a Yanma, I think. It's got compound eyes, that's not too bad. It just doesn't get any good moves in this generation. If we were one generation ahead, I'd probably be using that Yanma, to be honest, but we're not, so. Alright, so let's save. I probably should go back and redo that and try to use less Pokeballs because our wallet is very thin at the moment, but we'll get a little more money together uh, just as we go here. So, because we gotta go through the Pyrite building in order to get to Mirror B, so. Um, yeah, Crocodile is fine for now. I'm gonna keep him out front so I can call him out of Hyper Mode in the next battle, and then we'll go from there, so. Yeah, punished Yanma. A Pokemon denied his good moves. <laughs> if only he got something decent. Probably be a little bit better than he is at the moment. Is there a... No, no, that was just the PC. I thought there was a little thing on the floor or something. Hello. No. Oh, so yeah, see, I probably would have been curious and gone over this way after that battle and... Well, we don't have to worry about catching Shadow Pokemon in here because the next one is on the top floor. But still, wouldn't want to, you know, run the risk of having to redo the Yanma fight, so... And that I got it. Pearl Run is going to be a Safari Zone run. Drapion, Carnivine, and Yanmega. Nice. That'll be helpful. It's kind of a cool little challenge, you know? Gives you a nice little varied amount of Pokemon, too, so... Just checked, you did not beat the Diablo, Seragios, and Devil Joe Quest for you. I am a god of for you, yes! <laughs> right, the posture of these people is getting to... Yeah, I know, it's just like their backs are just so scrunched up. Makes my back hurt just looking at it, to be honest with you. Alright, we need Surf for this fight, so let's call Krokinaw. Get him out of that, so that he doesn't just want to use Shadow Rush and only Shadow Rush. We'll put up a Reflect, and then we'll Helping Hand our first Surf. And it will kill everything. <laughs> Maybe. Might not kill Fon uh, Fampy in one hit, but... We'll see. It'll definitely kill Trap Inch in one hit, but I mean, I guess it's Helping Hand. It increases the power of the move by 50%, so even if... It was not incredibly powerful. It should still do a significant chunk of damage, so... Yeah, and then they nerfed double and triple Surf. Yep, they made it hit everything. I, I want to say it was because of this game, to be honest with you, because... You do this stuff in this game, and like I said, Surf is really OP. If you can get a Pokémon with decent special attack stat in this game using Surf, which uh, Croconaw, when it evolves into Feraligatr, ends up being, I think, the second highest special attack of any water Pokemon in the game. Um, there's one other one that has higher special attack and still gets Surf, but it's a legendary, so sometimes that's not something you want to use, you know? Uh, but yeah, so like I said, Fampy survived, but <laughs> it didn't survive well. So, alright, SPN, let's finish this up. Is the world of Pokemon that if the gravity is higher, so you have to stand... Maybe the gravity is higher. Yeah, that's a possibility. Although in 4th gen, there's a move called gravity that also increases the gravity, so I would imagine that maybe that would definitely hurt your posture if the gravity's already higher. But yeah, that's a fair theory. I could get behind it. I could see how it could be plausible. We don't talk about catching the big three in this game. 50 plus Ultra Balls each. Yeah, I'm considering maybe using the glitch to catch them, because I don't think we have enough money to catch them without save scumming, to be honest. <laughs> so, we'll see. Fur, did you get any, uh... Okay, that doesn't really do a whole lot for your bar, so... It's doing decent for Slugma's bar, though. So, and Flaffy's doing pretty good as well with the bar. Alright, I'm gonna try to get to the uh, PC and the healing machine there. Let's put Croconaw away for now. We got out of hyper mode. Uh, but yeah, that elevator for now is off limits. We'll figure out what we can do with it later. I was barely even in your peripheral view, kid. What the hell? Oh, boy. But yeah, most of the trainers in here, I think all of the trainers in here, will battle you on site once you get to a certain part of the room. So, as you can see, even if I had tried to come over to the PC after catching the Yanma, it would have been... Uh, a little bit difficult, because I would have had to go through two trainers to get there. 
they saw what Surf did in this game and decided to nerf it because it was deemed too powerful to be left alone. Yes, exactly. Fair enough. That's that's pretty much exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think we need reflect for this one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna double team a Talo. I think it might. Well, it's level 33, so it might not die from a confusion. But... Never mind. Talo's pretty frail. <laughs> You had to save to come on the first one, and then the second one. Did like Venus, though, as much as you hate her. <laughs> I think they all have specific strategies, if I remember right, but I don't remember what their strategies are off the top of my head. I think one of them uses, like, Protect Earthquake. Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? I don't know, maybe it was another sign. I don't know, maybe. It's tough, though, because hindsight's twenty twenty about that stuff, you know, so you... Depending on you know, how you in, you interpret and perceive things that you saw in your past. It could be a sign, it could have been just a fluke, but you never know. Important thing is where you are now. That's the important thing, so. That pseudo-surf named Mudwave or something or other with a chance of accuracy decrease. Yeah, Muddy Water, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little inaccurate for my taste, but... I mean, it reduces accuracy, so I guess it's fair that it's not fully accurate itself, so... Yeah, me too, Pike. Good lord. <laughs> Trainers are starting to get a little bit higher level Pokémon here, so... Muddy Water, it always misses for you. Yeah, it misses often for me as well, so I feel your pain. Excuse me, Nora. Gotta use the PC to save. Almost as bad as Hydro Miss. <laughs> yeah, Hydro Pump, Fire Blast, Thunder, all those, Blizzard... Some of those are the reasons why I don't really, uh, I usually just go for the less powerful but more accurate move, to be honest, so. Alright, so Furred isn't getting a whole lot from being in the party. Let's try somebody else out. Let's pull Skiploom into the party and see if it gets more from walking around. Uh, but first, before we do that, I'm gonna save. And then, I'm going to go use the restroom and also, eh, I should fill up my water as well. Probably a good idea. So I'll go do that, and I will be right back.
Fair enough. Okay, I have returned. Uh, let me catch up on chat, and then we will go to the second floor. Let's see. Mirror B is Rain Dance Spam. Venus is Charm. Uh, Drakeem is Earthquake and Protect, and Dr. Culpa. I think that's Ein in this case. Is Rain Dance and Thunder. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right there, Drum. I think you're correct. We're trying to use one hit moves. Do not recommend. Uh, only with Mind Reader. <laughs> Although I barely ever get to use them with Mind Reader, to be honest, so. Like in Heart Gold and Soul Silver with the rematches, just Kid Joey with the level 80 Raticate over here. Unpopular opinion, didn't actually like Heart Gold and Soul Silver that much. Played it twice and half of Heart Gold, minus the Poke Athlon. I got so bored after a while. The Poke Athlon was really good. I like that as a mini game as well, so I can I can vouch for it. I wanted to beat every event. But I mean it's it's fine. That's I think I prefer Crystal over Heart Gold and Soul Silver, to be honest. I think I prefer the OG, so I, I guess I'm kind of in the same boat. Yeah, find it funny that Latios and Latios just show up randomly and can't tell. Didn't fix a lot of the problems Gold and Silver had, like that horrid level curve. It kind of puts you off. I can get that, yeah. The level curve was kind of iffy in it as well. Yeah, so it, it didn't take the opportunity to fix the problems is what it could have done as a, as a remake, you know. Kind of challenging, but yeah, that's true. Never got to play Heart Gold Soul Silver when they came out. Have very recently gotten a DS emulator Soul Silver, so you have a chance to see the Pokeathlon there. Nice. Well, Pokeathlon's fun. I think it is. So, prefer VC Crystal so you can sell your soul for a shiny Celebi. <laughs> well, you did that though, so you got your shiny Celebi, which is you know always a good thing. The hunt was long and tiring, I'm sure, and tedious, but you got it. So. All right, where are we at here? Uh, we're trying Skip Loom to see if walking around does anything for its bar, or, or if it's pretty good. And basically, I'll just keep three in that it does stuff for their bar. So, and then we'll just keep going with Espeon, Umbreon, and Croconaw doing some stuff. I'll swap Croconaw in as we go, I think. I might come back down and save after a little bit, though. Like, uh, I'm just going to check these vending machines. I don't think any of them work, but... It'd be nice if they did, because I'd get some lemonade right now, but, you know... Yeah, we shouldn't need to save for a little while because, like I said, there are no more Shadow Pokemon until we get to the top floor, so... Ooh, and they give you uh, some Great Balls, actually, in uh, this section, according to the, the guide, so... Once had a Magneton with Charge Cannon and the aim, Take Aim. Oh, okay, so you had uh, Lock On and Zap Cannon. Okay, yeah, that's that's a good combination. That's pretty, it's pretty solid, because it always paralyzes, too, so that's always nice. The hunt took an effing month of resetting every night, and then that was when you buckled down. Yeah, literally just the bandana guy. Yep, that's him. But yeah, it, it was a it was a long fight to get it, but you got it. So that was the important part. Excuse me. You played the life out of cr your crystal card to the point where the batteries messed up and could crash at any point. Oh boy. What was everyone's first shiny mon? Gyarados doesn't count. Yours was a ghastly with blue flames instead of purple. Shiny Poochiana and Ruby. Gold Pupper. Uh, what was my first shiny Pokemon? I forget if I ever... I think I caught one of them at some point, but I forget... I want to say there was a shiny Golbat in... Sapphire that I caught? I think. That's, that's what's popping to mind. A lot of the shinies that I've seen have been, like, shiny Geodude that blows up on the first turn when I don't catch it in Pokeball immediately, so. That's no good. Well, anyway, we got a bunch of experience from that. 
We've got a Barboach. We'll keep Kraken on in for this. It's fine. We managed to knock everybody else out, so that's good. Let's surf. You once had a shiny Magikarp in the Dark Cave from Heart Gold, and you had a full shiny evolution. Nice! Well, you could say you didn't get it directly from the Red Gyarados that way. That's always a good thing. So. Two bites! Twice the chance of flinching. One of your friends got a Caterpie and Sun. It was his first legit shiny he'd been playing since Cold, Silver, and Crystal. Oh my god. Yeah. That's... that's rough. <laughs> I'm not surprised, though, because it's, it's hard. Sometimes you don't see them at all. So, it depends on how many Pokemon he's encountered since then, you know? He could have only encountered... I mean, if you haven't encountered 8,192, then you're still inside of the normal odds if you didn't see a, uh, a shiny in all of those Pokemon, so... Your first shiny was a shiny Zigzagoon and Omega Ruby, but you could be wrong. It, it takes a while to get them, that's for sure. So, again, I still can't believe my shiny story, my worst shiny story with the... Uh, the tutorial of Black and White 1. I, I was playing Pokemon Black version at the time. Uh, I think I mentioned this on the last stream, but I'll say it again because not everybody was here. I was playing Black uh, Black 1, and the professor went to do the catching tutorial, and the Patrad in the catching tutorial was shiny. And I didn't see a single shiny for the rest of the game after that. I was miffed. Oh my god. And this was the first time I booted the game up, like the day after its release, so. You can imagine how miffed I was at it. <laughs> Let's see. Hatch them sometimes, too. Yeah, hatching them is nice when you can do that. And you can manipulate the odds in your favor when you hatch them sometimes as well. So that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to bite Remory just to see in case Confusion doesn't KO it. So. Best Mega Pokemon, in your opinion, it's Steelix. Steelix, all other opinions are invalid. Carfetch, Lola, Pup, Tyrogue, Venon. Alpha, your hatches that you've done. Design. Mega Scizor is a good choice, too. Um, it's been a while since I've seen a lot of the Mega Designs. Which ones did I really like? Oh, we did KO the uh, Remoraid with Confusion. Okay, that's good. And we got a flinch. Not too bad. Um, well, we gotta swap somebody out, so I guess it'll be Espeon again. Actually, thinking about it, though, Magneton might give a defense EV. It might not give special attack. It has high special attack, but I think it might give defense just because it's a steel type. So. You've done a lot of shiny hunts. You, you fought May and Emerald once at the beginning, and she had a shiny torch. It goes pretty much the normal one. Oh, it was a normal one in the second fight? What the hell? That's so weird. Oh, he predicted me. What the hell? That's okay, we'll KO the Magnet Might next turn. I'll just use Surf Fight and that'll do enough. Yeah, that's weird though, Drum. Like, I would think that it would at least, like, stay consistent across the whole game. I mean, it'd be rubbing it in your face, of course, but at least it would be consistent, you know? You've done a lot of Shiny Hunts. Still want to hunt another Giratina. Thank you, Shiny Charm. Yeah, the Shiny Charm always helps with that, that's for sure, so. The shiny value isn't supposed to be there at all, so it won't carry over. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, but yeah, that's, that, it makes sense as to why it is. It's just, it's not consistent, you know? So it's strange because it's not consistent. Um, yeah, abnormality detected because you just got your balls rocked here, dude. Uh, let's see. How much money do I have now? I've got almost 9,000. Okay. I could probably go buy more healing items if I wanted to now, but the, to be fair, the healing point is like right downstairs, so... And as far as I'm aware, the trainers in here don't uh, respawn their fights until you leave and come back. Like, I think it's after the next major event is when they uh, respawn their fights. Which I may be using to my advantage because, uh, well, we're going to get a fourth party member pretty soon. And I will want to have them fighting to get their experience up as well, so... One more floor after this one, and then we'll be up to the top floor, and we'll go from there. Uh, was that supposed to be cute, Bandana Guy Loba? I'm trying to understand. Why do many shinies look like crap? It's a problem. <laughs> their their coloration sometimes is a little odd, yeah. I can agree with that. Ten years of casual play, and you finish the Pokedex, because they throw darts at a board to determine color scheme. <laughs> Well, that's good, though. Finishing the Pokedex is a big challenge, and so it's good that you got it done. Congrats. Best looking shiny is Dragonair. That pink is beautiful. 
So it is a pretty good color for it, that's for sure. I like re regular Dragonair's looks too, though, so I don't know. I'd, if I had to pick one or the other, it'd probably be tough. Wish Soto Widow had an evolution. It would have pretty high stats if it had an evolution, but it would be a good idea, I think. Pretty cool. You'd end up with a three-stage rock Pokemon. That's not that common, so... I'm trying to think. The only one I can think of is Larvitar. So... No, actually, uh, Rock and Rolla as well has a three-stage rock Pokemon uh, evolutionary line. Ooh, nice crit. Well, that takes care of this guy. Nothing cute about one-shotting both your Pokemon. Remember someone on GameFAQs finished the Pokedex in like one or two months? Oh my god. That's a lot. Like, holy crap. And, and by that I mean that's like a lot of effort to put in in a single or one or two months total. Like, that's a lot of stuff to do in that space of time. Good lord. Well, there's a healing point on the floor below us, sir, so just go use that. Do any of these bookshelves have anything on them that would be worthwhile to us? There's five more Great Balls, by the way. Uh, no, probably not. Excuse me, Nora. All right, one more trainer, and then we'll, uh, we'll go up to the next floor. They really pack these hallways tight, don't they? Uh, by the way, Skip Loom, have I walked enough for you to... No, I have not. Okay. Next floor, we'll probably be able to see if it uh, gets a decent chunk out of it. I... It, I, I wish that the Yanma that was on the first floor was drawn to a candle. Not directly into it, but maybe it would have weakened it enough where it would have caught itself the first time. Ever see the beta of Gold and Silver with the scrapped Pokemon designs? I remember, I think I remember seeing a video about that at some point, yeah, I need to mention it. I'm gonna double team the Voltorb because it could go boom, I don't want that. Self-destruct and explosion in these games is still ridiculous because it, if I remember right in the first three generations, it treats your defense value like it's either halved or zero, one or the other. Both very, very scary, so not something I want to deal with. Ever seen the shiny elephant Pokemon? Uh, Don Fan, it's ugly, like holy hell. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a shiny Don Fan, so I'll have to take a look. Uh, yeah, Geodude and Rhyhorn, yeah, those are also three stage rock evolutions. Yeah, those just slipped my mind, but yes, that you're correct, Conker, they are. Never seen shiny Don Fan, never seen Stoutland before you hatched your own Lillipup. <laughs> you don't want to. Octillery was literally supposed to be a tank. It is halved, okay, yeah, it's why they were so strong, yes, exactly, because it's. It it's basically just cuts your defenses completely in half. It's like you got minus two defense, if I remember correctly. That's how the stat drops work. So, it's pretty ridiculous, and I definitely don't want to deal with it, so. Yeah, it's artillery, but it's like... I, th I think what Murray means is that, like, the... Its mouth was supposed to be, like, the cannon, and then... Its suction cups are, like, the tracks on a tank. I think that's what Murray means. Anyway, but I can I can see it. Sort of. It's a bit of a stretch, but I can see it, sort of. Steel types didn't tank self destruct or explosion well. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Even steel types had a hard time with self destruct and explosion back in these days. And really, if we go to when we go to Pokemon XD, there's uh, the Ore Coliseum in that one, where all of the uh, Pokemon that you fight are level 60 with max IVs and really solid EV spreads. Um, and in some cases, if you don't have the capacity to EV train in XD or, you know, through a, con a handheld game, sometimes it's just a matter of relying on self-destruct and explosion to get you through. It's, it's tough otherwise, so... Alright, we still haven't gotten your heart gauge anywhere yet. We're not walking enough. <laughs> Um, I'm not even gonna save, we'll just keep going. Alright, next floor. I'm trying to think if I want to do the, the sub-boss that's at the top of this building before the day is out today. And I think we'll have enough time, because we just gotta get through this floor and it's not that long, so... I think we'll do the sub-boss. I wasn't anticipating getting into the cave today, which is the next dungeon we'll go to, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So... Yeah, ghosts do just eat explosion. It's helpful because then you can have your own ghost in battle with, like, let's say a Snorlax that you taught self-destruct, and suddenly it's three versus two, and you're at a distinct advantage, so. 
Going back in time sucks. Why do people want to time travel? I don't know. Correct their mistakes, I guess? Eh, I got nothing. Uh, helping hand secret power will probably kill Lady Bun one hit again, so that's pretty cool. Look how grungy Pyrite's buildings look. <laughs> yeah, they're all dilapidated and run down. It's great. Again, it gives this game a very distinctive feel that I don't think has been replicated in basically any of the other Pokemon games that we've had up to this point. It just feels like the whole entire region is just on the brink of extinction, you know? Like, it's it's just barely holding on to any life that it has. So... I like it. It gives it a good aesthetic, so... Alright, and with that, we should be able... Well, we'll definitely be taking out the Lediva. But we might be able to take out Doduo with the confusion. We're on level with it now, so... Mm -hmm. Close enough. <laughs> we'll get it next turn. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. They want to travel in the future. It's possible. It's possible that they want to travel in the future, see what everything's like. It's true, too. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really, like... I like time travel as a plot device when it's done well. Like, let's say, in Chrono Trigger. Um, I don't think I'd ever personally want to time travel anywhere. Like, not even past or future. I don't know. I just... It doesn't really appeal to me. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but it doesn't really appeal to me personally. They couldn't keep using something this dismal looking. Think of the children. <laughs> what children? <laughs> oh, the Pokemon fans that... I don't know. I, I mean, I was... How old was I when this game came out? I think I was 13, so... I guess at that point I had kind of grown up with the series, because I'd been playing since Red, Blue, and Yellow, so... This, this was just the right aesthetic for me at the time, because I was starting to get into that, that edgier teenage phase, so... So it was just the right aesthetic, and obviously I remember it fondly, not just because of its aesthetic, but because it's a good game, all things considered, so... Um, I'm a town to you. I think we're gonna KO with Confusion. I probably would have been better off to just use Spider Secret Power, just in case I got a low roll, but it's fine, it worked out. Anyone know Sam and Max the Freelance Police? I have been thinking about playing the Sam and Max remastered game for the longest time. But I just haven't gotten my hands on it just yet. Maybe one day for the stream I'll do it. I think they're planning on making more of them, though. So, like, remastering the original trilogy of it. Because there was a few games that came out with Sam and Max, so... Yeah, I haven't really done much with them outside of that. Third grade, so you were ten. Okay, yeah. I was a little bit above you there, but that's okay. We were, we were all getting towards that time where we were starting to dig this dilapidated aesthetic that they've got going here. Okay, that does basically nothing for your bar either. Alright, fair enough. I'll go downstairs and get someone else out of the box. Drum did a complete randomizer Nuzlocke once and got a Sableye with Wonder Guard, so practically it couldn't die. <laughs> that's fun. Just have to worry about status moves at that point. Oh boy. Yeah, it's always fun when you get combinations of like Pokemon and abilities that are just busted as hell like that. So I think I need to do more randomizing when I do when I use the randomizer. I don't think I do enough when I randomize. I uh, I do some, but I don't do like all the abilities and the types and the moves and all that stuff. I usually just randomize like trainer Pokemon and. Maybe a couple of other things, and that's it. So, I don't go all the way with it. I probably should. Probably shouldn't say this publicly, but you have a package coming tomorrow. It's got your first set of gender-affirming clothes in it, so you're having excited. Nice! Congrats. That'll be fun. It'll be fun to try all that stuff on, so congratulations. Hopefully it all fits right for you. Or, even if it doesn't fit right, hopefully you have a uh, good return policy on it so you can get stuff that does fit right for you. But congrats, that's that's always a good thing. It's a good first step. Good progress being made there, you know. Sam Max the best comedy ever. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Lifeblood. It's just uh Marie's getting some fancy clothes, that's the important part. Oh. Should all fit, you did too much research. Well good. <laughs> When you order clothes online, it's always better to do more research so you know how everything fits, you know what I mean? So, but that's good. 
had to give Amazon almost. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of a. It's a little bit of a chunk out of the wallet there. That's for sure. <laughs> um. Let's see here. I don't think there's anything in here, except books, which are apparently too difficult for us to read, and that's fine. I was thinking about going back downstairs, but I think we'll beat the other trainer that's here, because I think there's, yeah, I was going to say, like, one or two more at the most, and then that'll be it, so. And then we'll go back downstairs, we'll heal, we'll save, and then we'll go up to the top floor. Yeah, money! Uh, well, yeah, a week's worth of clothes would cost that much. Yeah, that's fair. So. I don't know, I'm still gonna say, MY WALLET! It's a chunk, but, you know. If it gets you a week's worth of clothes, that's not bad, because that'll, you know, keep you for quite some time. It should keep you in good shape. Uh, Horsey... I don't think Horsey will get KO'd from the one bite, but it is weaker, much weaker, on the special defense side, so... And at least do a chunk of damage to it. I'm surprised that they changed that detail because if I remember correctly in the stadium games, when Oddish fainted, it lost its pedals. Like they fell off of its head. And that was kind of grotesque if I think back about it now that I think back on it. So I'm surprised they changed that detail in this one. Genius Sonority must not have liked it either. They must have said, wow, that's incredibly dark. Let's not have it do that every time it faints. You understand how expensive some of this stuff would be on not Amazon? Oh, probably much more expensive, yeah, for sure. So. I had to go somewhere else to spend almost $70 on a pair of shoes. No, kill me. <laughs> this is crazy. Spent six months saving up a nest egg. You spent most of it. Well, yeah. I mean, it got you some good stuff, at the very least, so that's at least a fair, but still. Quite a bit of money to, you know, be spending all at once. It's tough, you know. We got the revive that was in the room there. This lady's complaining about God knows what. I mean, it's just a Pokemon battle, lady. Slow down. Uh, good question. Let's find out if you actually thrash me or not. Because I would love to go upstairs, but... Well, first we gotta get through you. And that shouldn't be too hard. So, Tentacool is weak to confusion, but Tentacool's special defense is pretty high. I don't know if I'll KO with Confusion. I think I'm going to Secret Power it's just to be safe, and then we'll deal with Cacnea next turn. But yeah, Espeon and Umbreon are a pretty good combination for this first section of the game. They work very well with one another, and you, if you focus on them, they can blitz right through most of this part. So I'm going to have to get Krokinaw some more experience pretty soon. I've pretty much just been on autopilot. Uh, but we'll work on getting Crocodile some experience. In a bit. Maybe I'll get it into the battle now, so it can at least get some experience from Capnia. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, faint attack. I'll probably swap, uh, yeah, Espeon, because it's definitely using it on that, so... Alright, let's swap Crocodile in, just in case I don't one-hit KO it, which I probably won't with Umbreon, so... The nest egg was about $700 by the by, yeah, and then oh, most of it's gone, yeah. No good. Clothes should not be expensive like a gold baron, like what? <laughs> Splank fainting is pretty dark because it keeps his heart going by jumping nonstop, so he effectively dies by fainting. Yeah, that's that's pretty dark, yeah. Glad I'm not using a Splank. I do like the Splank family, but I don't think I've ever gotten to use one. Just never had a good opportunity, you know, so... Stupid Pokedex comments. <laughs> yeah, some of the Pokedex comments, if you read them, they're pretty, like, they're pretty dark. That's where the developers kind of just let their minds run wild, and they just say, say stuff like that, you know? So. Alright, well, Umbreon's level 32. Those are not bad stat gains. I got three attacks. That's pretty impressive, along with a bunch of other good stuff. The one speed is, eh, but it's not a big deal. Actually, speed on Umbreon wouldn't be too bad, because a fast taunt is usually a pretty good idea, but Umbreon's speed is... It, it's okay enough, I think, to where we shouldn't need to do any EV training with it, so... 
I have Pokemon that are about your level, but they're also fully evolved, so that would be the blind spot. Excuse me, Nora. Alright, let's go downstairs and heal. We'll save. I'll get somebody else out of the PC besides Skiploom, because Skiploom doesn't really care about me walking around in terms of reducing its uh, heart gauge there. So, I'm trying to think if I want to do like off-screen heart gauge dropping during this playthrough. Like there'll eventually be a point where there's like a good area where you can just kind of run in circles and reduce the heart gauge that way, because uh, there's like a a miniature track that you can run on in a certain area that we'll be going to later. And you can just run in circles over and over again until you get uh, the heart gauges down. But I don't know if I want to do that because that seems kind of tedious, so we'll see. You've never used Spoink, never liked it as a kid to be honest. Am I the only one who reads the Pokedex? <laughs> no, I read the Pokedex sometimes too and then I get creeped out by some of the stuff that's in there and I'm like, okay, let's stop now. <laughs> Just like most psychic types, best type is the dark type fight you. <laughs> no, dark types are pretty cool. I like the dark type as well. I don't know. It, it's gotten more representation in recent generations, um, but like at this time period, they were just starting to take off in, back in Gen 3, so. Because like if you went back to Gen 2, there was only like, what, four dark types or something total? I think that's about right. Umbreon, Murkrow, Tyranitar. Is that it? Might be three. I don't remember. There might be a fourth one I'm missing, but... Yeah, there, it wasn't very well represented in the Pokémon universe for a while, so... You read it. You're always shocked at the variety in the types of entries. <laughs> some of them are very wholesome, some of them are not. I have to agree to disagree. What type do you represent? Ice. Worst type defensively, one of the best offensively. Most of them are designed poorly AF, too. <laughs> but you love it. Uh... My personal favorite type... That's a tough one. Probably, for me, I would say flying would be my favorite type. I don't get to use too many flying types very often, though. It's kind of difficult sometimes because there's... It has a lot of weaknesses that are common with other Pokémon, and I don't like to have a lot of weaknesses to the same type in my teams. I usually only like to have about two weaknesses to the same type across a whole team, so... Hey, man, what's up? Oh, okay, sure. Fair enough. They captured an intruder. Who could it be? Let's go find out. Uh, but before you go through this door, if you haven't saved, you definitely want to, because remember the situation we just got into with Yanma? Well, it's about to happen again. <laughs> uh, I got 15 great balls and a Pokeball. I should be okay. All right, here we go. Weavile for the win. Favorite Pokemon. <laughs> your third gen fa uh, favorite type. Your third favorite type, rather. You are free to pass. <laughs> Glaceon helped cement ice as your favorite type. It's so cute. Help me. I'm being assaulted by cute things. <laughs> you did this in Emerald by taking a Pokemon to the daycare, choosing the trick bike, and just try to ride up the hills where you need the speed bike. Just put something on the up arrow to weigh it down and keep the... Yeah, that'll work. That'll work for getting you a bunch of experience and stuff, so throws an Eevee at you. Hatching a shiny Eevee. Oh, that's a that's a rough patch, that's for sure. Silva, what's he doing here? Well, he figured he could take the fight to, yeah, Mirror B, and that didn't exactly work. I could still punch him! Just because my Pokemon are knocked out doesn't mean I'm knocked out. Oh, boy. Well, they are knocked out, so that would be a bit of a problem for you. Thankfully, I'm here to fix that problem. Then greet me, darling, and let's dance. Okay, so you have to fa face two uh, peons of Mirror Bees in a row, and they both have a Shadow Pokemon for you to catch. Unfortunately for us, the Shadow Pokemon in this battle is the one that's a really, really low level that's in this particular, on the battlefield right now. And we don't have netballs to exploit the fact that it's a water type. It's Remoraid. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky. And uh, the other thing about Remoraid is that if you don't catch it at this point, you can't catch it until post-game. So we literally need to walk on eggshells with this guy. Uh, the question is, how do I want to do that? So Spinarak's gonna get one-shotted by Confusion. 
let's bite whatever comes in, and we'll save Remoraid for last. So. Funny story, you didn't know your little pup was shiny at first. Oh, nice. Been biking for hours, hatching one for a PGL tourney. Didn't see it was shiny until it was about to box for another batch of eggs. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, at least you noticed it, though. That's good. Uh, yeah, I've played a few of the Mystery Dungeon games myself. Yeah, I played uh, uh, Blue Rescue Team, and I've played Explorers of Sky. And I don't think we'll play Blue Rescue Team for the stream, but we'll pretty much definitely be playing Explorers of Sky for the stream. I'm not a big fan of the ending of Red and Blue Rescue Team. Uh, the main game's ending, that is. Uh, I really don't end up doing post-game basically at all, because I don't like the... It feels like a cop-out, basically, the ending of Red and Blue Rescue Team, at least to me. But, um, yeah. We'll, we'll, we won't, probably won't be doing anything with that, but we'll figure it out later. Uh, Explorers of Sky, though, yes. We'll definitely be playing Explorers of Sky. So, at some point. Alright, so what can not kill this Remoraid? So, ooh, you got Thunder Wave, that's helpful. I might switch one of you in to do something with that. Yeah, I'll probably switch you in to do something with that. I have an idea! So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch Flappy in. For Umbreon. Just to get a Thunder Wave off on the Remoraid. And then, if Confusion doesn't one-hit KO this Love Disc, which I don't think it will, uh, because it's a love disc, so it's slightly... Okay, it's a love disc. It slightly sucks. <laughs> Never mind. I thought love disc was a little tankier than that, but apparently not. Alright, so we're definitely going to T-wave this thing. But do I want to try to hit it? My plan, by the way, was to hit it with Surf, with Krakenau, because, well, its special attack is still low at the moment. It's still only got 36 special attack. And Remoraid resists it. And if Love Disk had lived, it would have split the damage of Surf as well. So, probably would have been okay. I... Any one move that we use at this point with either Espeon or uh, Umbreon will probably one-shot this Remoraid, though. So I don't want to do that. And I need to find somebody with really low attack. <sighs> Slugma, it might be you. With Sh well, Shadow Rush is base 90 power, though, so that's a little sketch sketch. Hmm. I'll switch it out anyway, just to see. But let's at the very least T-wave this thing. Actually, Fluffy's attack might not be that high either, so... Yeah, this one is a pain to catch, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. That'll put Slugma below the threshold for its next move, though, so... We'll go see what that is. Maybe it's something that's not, like, base 90 power. <laughs> Because then if it is something that's slightly less powerful, at least then maybe I'll be able to use it for something. It must have Hustle, this Remoraid, because it just missed an 100% accurate Rock Throw. Rock Throw will work. Rock Throw will definitely work. Um, let's swap Croconaw in, maybe get the special attack EV out of this, because I think it gives that. Portals to Infinity was your first and only. Okay, so that's... I think that was Gates of Infinity in the US, so... I haven't played that one. Alright, cross your fingers. Okay, good, good. Stay right there, Remoraid. Stay right- I mean, you can Shadow Rush if you want, but stay right there. <laughs> Whew! That was tricky. Never used the daycare for any serious reason at all. <laughs> gotcha. Hatch thousands of eggs, they all blend together. Yeah, when- I mean, when you're hatching that many eggs, yeah, I can see how it would all blend together. So. Kid you did not have that patience of collecting all the unknown. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of uh, collecting you're doing there, but it's cool, you know? It gives you an interesting and unique collection, you know? So, that's good. Alright, so that's done now. I'm not going to get rid of this Pokeball in case we need to use the glitch on the next Shadow Pokemon, but let's see if Remoraid decides to stay in this Great Ball. I'll tell you what I wouldn't do for Net Balls right about now. thought Rock Throw was stronger than that. You killed a Charizard with it. Well, remember, it's only coming off of 29 attack, which is low. Uh, it's 50 base power, and it's not stab, and it's not weak to it either, so even with the 10 level advantage, it, you know, it should help us a little bit, so. Now, if, it, if Slugma had evolved at this point, or if it had a secondary rock typing, it probably would have done about three quarters of its HP bar, so 
<laughs> that would not have been good. It would have been very close. And actually, if we had gotten a crit there, it would have killed. Or come very close to killing, so... Yeah. You overused the Savari Zone. Savari Zone and Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Got you a shiny Geo. Oh, and Heart Gold. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, see, I think I used the Safari Zone a little bit in Heart Gold, but didn't use it too much. I like the idea of it, though. That was the one where you could, like, change the blocks, right? Like, you could move all of the sections of it around. I liked the idea for that one. I just didn't get to use it all that much. So. Uh, hired is a strong word. That would imply he's paying me money to do this, so... I wish he was paying me money for this. I could use the, the loan <laughs> or the paycheck in this game. This game money's a little tight, so... Okay. So, the first one was a warm-up. This one is a little...